What up, Four Loop listeners? It's your boy, Lawrence, here at the Back Computer, sitting with your other co-host, the man, the myth, the man in the sky. Uh, you got you got Jake on this, the Superman computer? He doesn't have a computer. He's there. And he may not be a woman, but he's still a wonder. It's that boy, Marcus Smith. Back from his hiatus. Yeah. Back and not taking another one. <laughs> Ever again. He ain't hot here like DJ Khaled. Another one. Yeah, no. <laughs> it is true what they say: the military is not for everyone. Oh, and I had to the hard way. And we're sad that you had to go through that, but we're glad you're back with us. That is, that is basically what everybody has oh, been yeah. saying. It's time to bring the ruckus. And Larry, you know what we should probably start doing? Some like a some type of uh opener, like uh not like a question of the day because that's too random, but like something else. You mean my opener yeah. where I just like weirdly tied us to superheroes in this movie? No, but like so you know how for like um the four loop podcast, the main one, like we'll yeah. have like we'll try to have a question of the day. Yeah. But something somewhat similar for yeah, something movie. like that, but for like the topic of the movie that we're going to talk about, you know. Okay, so today's um, yeah, I'll just go off of that. Today we're going to be talking <laughs> about Batman versus Superman Ultimate Edition by Zack Snyder. Yeah, but to kind of like I didn't breaks really see a difference. There um, it's about thirty extra minutes of content. It just really? it's like filler scene like scenes that kind of. Makes it less jarring. Do you remember which scenes? That's um, Stephen Wolf scene. The okay, Stephen yeah, Wolf I scene. definitely thought I definitely which... was like that's not in the movie. <laughs> that was so random. Um, yeah, I didn't. I I wish they didn't add that. It was I'm so awfully didn't. placed. I'm I glad don't they think it didn't was awfully placed. It. That but... that should have been an after credit scene. That made no sense being where it was. It it, sh- it should have been an after credit scene. Um, but I guess to like. I'm not sure of actually all the main differences, at least with this one. But I guess to break into it, what's uh, what's everyone's favorite superhero? You already know the answer to that question, bro. It's the same for both. I know, Spider-Man. I know the answer, but tell yeah. them the answer. It's Miles Morales, Spider Man. Yep. And is and that favorite. yours too, Shake? Yeah, it is. Yes. And if if I had to give you a secondary uh superhero, just so I can like show you some variety or whatever. Uh, it would be the current Blue Beetle right now, by played by Jaime Reyes. Well, he's not played by; he is the Blue Beetle. Well, that that iteration of Blue Beetle, because there is another version yeah. of Blue Beetle. Yeah. Uh, mine would be the Flash, uh, specifically White Wally West Flash. White Wally West Flash. There's a black Wally that... West. Okay. Yeah. I, when you said is. white, I thought you meant like white suit, and I was like, No, no, no. Is there a white suit? No. Nah. No. They're oh. both named after their grandfather. Yeah. Um. Okay, my favorite is Batman. Of I am a diehard Batman fan. Diehard Batman fan. If I had to pick a secondary one, it would probably it probably be Nightwing. Still Bat Family, but I don't know. I guess that counts. Man's a Bat fanatic. I am a Bat fanatic. But I, you know, I like my Bat Family. I get it. Okay, well, I guess we can get into this now. Everybody knows our favorite superheroes and stuff. Yeah, was that was that was that good enough an op- opener for you? Yeah, I like it. It was okay. it was pretty decent. <laughs> I'm like, what's like a question of the day, but not something we're going on a tangent with. Um, but yeah, as we recently said, we're gonna be doing Batman v Superman, and like all the previous ones, I just got like. Some like a little bit of IMDb stuff I'm gonna go over. So a synopsis oh, is just uh, fearing the actions of Superman are left unchecked. Batman takes on the Man of Steel while the world wrestles with what kind of hero it really needs. I got this off of IMDb. Um, it's Batman for Super Super Superman. Supernam. Supernam. That uh, who? <laughs> That's another podcast in itself. Oh my gosh. Uh. <laughs> You got you got your main actors. You have Ben Affleck as Batman, Henry Cavill Superman, Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor, 
uh, Amy Adams is Lois Lane and Jeremy Irons is Alfred. Now, at first, I was not okay with Ben Affleck being Batman. I was not okay with it. I think no but one after like seeing that movie, seeing how dark he can get and stuff like that, I was like, you know, it's warming up to me. Still would have preferred somebody else, but it's not as bad as I once thought he was. To He's okay. Me, to me, Ben Affleck is like the perfect comic book Batman. He just really, yes, but he just didn't have. He just didn't have like the material to actually like showcase that. What do you mean? But, like suit and mannerisms. I feel like he was the perfect Bruce Wayne Batman. Don't say he was the perfect Bruce Wayne Batman. He was a horrible Bruce Wayne. I don't. He was a I... horrible Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne really? Is ex... He is supposed to be an eccentric billionaire. That is supposed to be like his like his thing. Like why people don't think Bruce Wayne is Batman because they're yeah. like two completely different people. And he and was kind of bad. No, okay, yeah. Wasn't. Now that you mention it, now what? that you mention it, yeah. No, he wasn't. Now that you mention it, yeah, he's 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 not he's he's a better Batman than he was Bruce Wayne. But you also got to think he's older too. So even, I go, even yeah, but older, still, like, unless you're talking about like Batman Beyond Bruce Wayne, where like he's like old as fuck. Like Bruce honestly, Wayne he would be a good Batman shown. Beyond Bruce Wayne. <laughs> he he would have been like if they aged him up some more and just like you're you're like who Bat like if they did like a Batman Beyond movie, right? And he yeah. played Batman, but like the old, like the Batman Beyond Batman, Bruce Wayne. I mean, like that could have worked for how he acted, but like as Bruce Wayne being Batman, and like during the time he's actually Batman, he did not play a good Bruce Wayne. Yeah, uh, personally, I can agree. I, personally, I feel like he did. I feel like more of the eccentric billionaire comes in like Justice League. A little I bit. Don't know. We're not but, talking about Justice League, though. Yeah, I know. We're talking uh, about Batman versus Superman. But I also took it more as like this was more like the Batman Returns Batman, or the Dark Knight Returns Batman. Doesn't doesn't That's he have still a standalone? A way older Batman. Doesn't he have yeah. a standalone movie? Ben Affleck has been no. no no. So oh, so he just popped. The last up standalone as... movie with Batman was uh, Christian Bale Batman, who yeah. played Bruce Wayne beautifully, like just fucking amazing. That was. That, that's why that movie has over a billion, made over a billion dollars. Because <laughs> Christian Bale. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, honest, I don't think he was terrible. I don't think he was terrible at all. I think it was, like, subpar. When it comes to, like, mashing the two identities together. Because it's like, when he plays Bruce, when, when Batman becomes Bruce Wayne, or when Bruce Wayne becomes Batman, he's, like, a whole different person, like completely different yeah. i could still say oh you know there's a hint of him being batman as bruce wayne and stuff you know like he is like he puts on a mask and takes off the other quite literally and it's like you know i, I don't think he did that 100 percent well but he still did a good job i think he did a decent job as playing the part yeah, I I I want to say like yeah, decent job. I don't think he was horrible, but um, I I would also I would agree that he was a better Batman. Um, and then we're we're we'll go ahead and get into it, but the main casting choice that was wrong in all of this was Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. You know, this man was not Lex I, Luthor. I don't. I don't agree. I think he could have been a great Lex Luthor. What? I think you he know nothing been, about Lex Luthor. I do. My man. I think he could have been a good Lex Luthor if he just took. If he was just more serious in this movie. That. That Batman versus Superman Lex Luthor was not Lex Luthor. That is not. That, he was the Riddler. He was, was the Lex Riddler. Luthor's name. That's exactly what that movie was. I mean, was like I said, how he was portrayed, I get it. But I can see him being Lex Luthor if he just took the role more serious. Like, if the directors didn't make him all silly and goofy and whatever, I think Jesse Eisenberg could have done a better job. I, I genuinely think that. 
I guess we're gonna have to agree nah. to disagree here because nah. I'm <laughs> sorry. Nah, man. He just he just played yeah. that he just played what the directors wanted too well. That's what I think it boiled down to. He did what they wanted. Do I think it's Jesse Eisenberg's fault of the characters like that? No. I think the directors made a very poor decision. I feel like they tried to change something and they did a horrible job. Of and I mean, he's a yeah. good actor. He's really, a good he, actor. he is a phenomenal actor. He is so like the fact actor. that they made him the fact that they made him do this was like, oh, OK, I'm going to be the best damn person you asked me to be. But if he was like, yo, be serious, I'm talking more serious than the social network, like be serious, then the motherfucker could have played a good, you know, a good uh, Lex Luthor. But what for what they made him do? He was not a good Lex Luthor. He no, was a good yeah, actor, yeah. but not a good Lex Luthor. Yeah, that's what I'm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Even even with all that, I just don't. For me, I guess it. He just didn't look the part, also. Because like what Lex Luthor ain't of, never had hair. Yeah, the edge yeah, of the movie where they shaved his head. I never understood the part of him like having hair. When he had hair, I was like, "Why is that? Like, why? Why?" Are, and I know it's the director's fault. I don't understand why they gave him hair. And I, you could have at least in halfway through it, like, cut his hair off, and I would have been like, okay, I accept that. But no, he they, they didn't do that. And then they shave it at the end. Like, they don't do that in prison. Like, at all. That's not a thing. This this was superhero prison. That's not a thing. It's not a thing, <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, it was it was like completely mm-hmm. random. It was at the point that oh, now he's the actual Lex Luthor, and it's like okay, I'm done. But like he's, he's still acting guy. crazy, like he's the Joker. Like that's the thing that bothers me. You're not actually Lex Luthor now because you're still acting crazy. He wasn't even like the no. He was like the Riddler. That's yeah, he, who his he was. Character. Like the riddles, the the puzzles. Like that's what he was doing. That's the Riddler's thing. And that made no sense at all. <laughs> Bef- and before we, I guess, give away everything, let's just go re- go ahead and get into it. So the movie starts off with, as many Batman movies do, we get the origin story of Batman. Like, of course. really brief though. I will give the movie that it like didn't take a lot of time on it. It was like, boom, they're dead. He's having a dream. He's a Batman. As he's like lift being lifted up by bats from the well. And yeah, I thought that was a pretty good, uh, pretty good little thing that they did. Um, it was like the Spark the Notes version. Yeah, I liked it because he wasn't introduced as the Batman yet, you know, and now he is. So, like, I, I liked it. I thought it was pretty dope. Yeah. And then we see his parents die. Bruce hears his father saying his mother's name, Martha. That was like the last thing. Which we'll get to. We'll get to yeah, that. Yeah, we'll get to that. Um, and then, like in my notes, the one of the main problems with this movie is it jumps around so much. Like, you have like a three minute scene, then it cuts. Three minute scene, then it cuts, and it sh- it kind of repeats that pattern. Really? I don't. I didn't really notice like that. Yeah, if you actually like sit down and like look at it, it, it jumps around a lot because as soon as you get done with that, you get to the. We get like a flashback to Man of Steel where Superman's fighting General Zod and they're just kind of like tearing through the city. Yeah, but that that entire scene was him tearing through the city and stuff and like Batman running to like, which which bothered me. It like him running to the scene. Yeah, I I mean, yeah go ahead. Because like, I guess he was trying to like one is like who who's in like doing this? Why is everything blowing up? Why is everything on fire? I mean, he could clearly see that from like going around the area, and the fact that like people are dying, like you clear he clearly cannot do something about this. There is nothing this guy can do about what's happening in this city right now. Especially why are you who he is? Yeah, like, why are you running towards danger at this point? Like, okay, people are in shock and they don't care where you like that you're running towards the danger. I can I can get by that, but why are you doing it? Did you okay? You saved the little girl, but how many other people died on your way to this location? You know, yeah, what like I mean? a couple thousand. It's it's fine. 
oh, but I say this little girl, and now I look up, and, you know, and like, okay, whatever. He, he tried to call, uh, I think his name was Jack, I guess someone working in his company, to try to get everyone out, but it was it was a little too late, because the building yeah. got, like, sliced. Also, I mean, why does, why does yeah, Bruce Wayne have a company in Metropolis? That is not where Wayne, ma- like, Wayne Enterprises station. I well, think sometimes they have... Forever yeah. has, like, places, things everywhere. Yeah, sometimes I think they have just, like, crossovers all the time of, of that type of stuff. Like, oh, you know, there's a Wayne something next to the Daily Bugle, or... Not the Daily Bugle, what the fuck? Yeah. Uh, whatever. The Daily Planet. <laughs> the Daily Planet. But, yeah. Hey, Spider-Man, brother. Yeah. Because yeah. in this, like, Gotham is pretty much just right across the river from Metropolis. It's basically, like, New York. Like, the... The different sections, divisions. Well, Gotham mm-hmm. is based off of Manhattan, so. Yeah, so it, it's it's fair to reason that he has buildings everywhere with his company. But he does that. He saves the little girl, and then he helps uh, this man who gets his like legs pinned under a thing of steel, which one looked horrific. I could not imagine yeah. like getting my legs like panini pressed like that. I would have been mad as hell, dude. And, um, his name was Wallace. Friends called him Wally. And I guess the one thing I do like is the small things it adds, it does eventually, like, work its way through into the story. Cause, that what? Like, the smaller things work their way back in. Like, well, him just being this man, he comes oh, yeah, back yeah, into yeah. the story. Yeah, yeah. I think that works. I, I like that, yeah. you know? Um... And yeah, I don't know. With that portion, it did show a, a good, like, there are consequences to the things that have happened. Yeah. And that's that's a big thing this movie is trying to do. It's just, like, there's consequences for, like, superheroes existing. And, and then we move to 18 months after this whole debacle. Where two divers pull up a huge chunk of kryptonite in the ocean. You know, which makes sense. I, I was like, okay, cool. Just a thought. Um, and, we also, and we also learned that those were Hmong people. I didn't know that until Brandon pointed that out. Um, Wait. And then... W- huh? Was it? Yeah, Brandon said they were Hmong. I thought, that was, I thought those were the people that were in the later scene. That was later, they dug They dug up the kryptonite? No, yeah, no, the one that were Hmong were the ones in the later scene, I think. What are you talking Yeah, 18 months later, that's what we're on. <laughs> no, the, the no, basement like scene. later in the movie. Oh, the, no. Yeah, the Asian people you saw later in the movie, those are Hmong people. I thought he was also talking about the ones that picked up the stones in the Krypton, like, the pick, picked up the Kryptonite, because that's when he made the comment that they were Hmong. At okay, least that's we'll, what I... We'll do a little bit of fact-checking. Uh, so take what we say with a great assault here. Um, but yeah, and then you know we find out later that that guy is working for Lex, but we go back to Lois Lane, who is in Africa meeting a dangerous warlord for an interview. Which I don't understand how reporters get clearance for that. I don't understand how they're okay with just. We're going to take in this reporter so that they can spread the word of our debacle and our evil ways. I, I, I don't get that. So the but just happened. knew where this warlord was, but the military didn't? Exactly. <laughs> I don't understand, bro. If I wanted to spread fear, I wouldn't let a reporter come in, talk about stuff, and then leave. Like, what? Yeah. Not really what terrorists do. And then we have Jimmy Olsen, who is with her. Oh, that's... As a photographer. Yeah, I, I want to talk about him. <laughs> Let's talk about it. <laughs> Let's talk about so, it. But he's on a secret mission, so I'll let you guys go ahead and talk yeah. about that. So, real, real quick, Jimmy Olsen is there. He's the photographer, and he's like, I'm um, here just to take photos. But then he finds out there's a tracker in his photo, in his camera, because he's worked for the CIA. Which is not but, a thing. That's yeah. not a th- What? Jimmy Olsen. Come on now. You said that. So it's so. Are you talking? Jimmy Olsen's the actor, correct? No, Jimmy no. Olsen's the character. Jimmy Olsen is literally Superman's best friend. Yeah. 
who's like, in oh, this movie. Is that, is that how he dies? No. In no. The... Oh, go ahead. You got this. No, you got it. You got it. You got it. So in the comics, Jimmy Olsen is Superman's best friend. And like throughout. And eventually he gets, he does get killed eventually at some point. In some comics. Like all char- like all comic book characters do. Like, exactly. Well, man got five minutes and he died. <laughs> yeah. Which, that was one thing that pissed me off. Because I'm like, Jimmy Olsen should have been this like, big character to like have a friendship with Superman. But no, he's killed within like five minutes of the movie. Super- in the comics, Superman has literally like traveled the universe in a blink of an eye to save Jimmy Olsen. Well, he's dead. He got shot in the face. <laughs> Whenever... Um, the, one of um the warlord's henchmen, who is played by Callan Mulvey, I think his name is. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's Callan. Mul- yeah, Callan Mulvey. He's a really good actor. Like he's depicted as the bad guy for a lot of things. I think he was in. He just got. Uh, I gaps. think he was in Captain America, a movie. I think he was in Captain America one. I think he was in Captain America one. But yeah, he he's also in power. If you've seen that, that dude is a really good actor. But this guy takes the camera, breaks it, finds a tracker. He's like, "Oh, CIA!" They shoot him in front of Lois Lane, and then the warlord gets suspicious that Lois Lane is also working for the CIA. Um, I see here in your notes you said he gets murked right away. We already covered that. Yeah. Um, Lois is taken hostage because of this, and then Superman comes in to save her, and sends the Warlord flying at 700 miles like, per hour. This man Which just like, like this man's dead. Like he of got like dead. five G's of force through a wall. Which so, I got a problem starts, with that in this yes, movie. Yes, because this starts one of my main points. Like why? Right off, okay, at this people. at this moment right now, Superman just. I'm pretty sure, like, Superman just killed this dude. Yo, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Th- and and the science behind that is this man is coming at you at top speed, and he grabs you. Now, Lois, you could argue she was fine from that whole scenario, but the fact that you came at me with that full speed, didn't slow down, and took me with you, that's a kill. That's a kill. That's getting hit by a truck, and the truck don't stop. That's a kill. No, that's the not. man was cool. That's getting man. hit by a jet. E- yeah, it was, either way, you're getting hit by a large object going at the same speed without stopping. You're dead. Like, unless so my question is, yeah. why is Superman killing people? Superman. I think that's the only death that he does. Like the only ki- like the only human he's killed. I feel in like this the, movie so far. But it doesn't I feel like, matter. I feel like That's... the movie wants us to believe that he doesn't kill people, but that man's dead. I mean, I'm pretty sure the movie is like, oh, he's not dead. He just grabs the guy and flies away. But if you put real logic behind this, that he's dead. dead. Yeah. You Unless if if they had show dead. if they had showed like a whole flash or uh what's it called? Quicksilver scene where like time slowed down. And then, like, he did certain things. They did this in Smallville, by the way. So this, they could have done this, where he slowed down time and, like, did what he had to do to make sure he didn't die, but saved Lois. Like, every, that would have been cool, but they didn't. They missed that opportunity. That takes, yeah. like, 30 seconds. Uh, and you're telling just... me. Sorry. I was asked if you had anything, because I know you were trying to speak there. Yes. So you're telling me. From the time, so you're telling me in 18 months, because they gave us a time period from Man of Steel mm. to what is going on now. In 18 months, Superman goes from literally screaming in anguish to having to kill somebody. Somebody who was, like, almost the cause of, like, not almost, but like was the cause of, like, thousands of people dying. Oh, or man. getting brutally injured to just, like, he caught that one body and now he's cool killing. That's how that's how fast it took to take Superman off his pedestal of like the god he's supposed to be. The Apparently, savior. the symbol yeah. of that one body. And I'm again, I don't think like the movies base. I don't think the movies like. Oh no, he's not dead. The movies probably saying no, he's not dead. He just picks him up and no, flies away. No, that's not how the human body works. Yeah, it's, no, that it's not how dead. the human body works. They didn't portray it right, but they messed like I'm. 
I know they messed up, but that's what they went for. <laughs> anyway, all that craziness aside, that happens. He saves her, and then I guess like flies off or whatever. It switches from there to like there's a court hearing where there's this lady well, talking about. Well, you actually hold on. You forgot like the one key thing in that movie was that the henchmen that were working for that warlord turned their back on him while Superman yeah. was on his way. Yeah, there that is one thing. There's like it's like almost like a secondary group of people in there. It was like, like undercover agents pretty much. Yeah. And they shoot the allies of the warlord and stuff. They set them on fire kill some of the family or they didn't kill the family members they just set the warlord guys on fire and made sure superman like destroyed the drone that was going to bomb the entire place yeah so pretty much it seemed like a whole big frame thing and then we go back to where larry was uh mentioning we go back into normal the normal city yeah we're at like a, a court hearing news broadcast wherever and there's like there's a girl sitting there on the TV. She's talking about how like Superman was responsible for everyone that had died, and talking about how like his power was dangerous. Yeah, while all this was going down, which honestly, like, I mean, yeah, you can cover up like, oh, Superman didn't really like Superman killed all these people and stuff like that. But I mean, there were no casualties. Honestly, like all the bad guys ended up dying or getting taken away aka dying but like nobody was really no good person was really dead besides jimmy so, olsen <laughs> except for jimmy olsen yeah but he's a cia agent and they found him so they they really can't speak on that they fucked up but how are you gonna get mad that somebody like came through and you know stopped the bad guys like i don't i don't you know what i mean i don't i don't get that See, that's how, like, it actually happened, but how, like, they seen it and how, like, she was describing it, it was that Superman pretty much just came in there with, like, no intentions. And just beating up people. Just, I, just I get it, because they don't people. have footage. Yeah. I get it. But the one, as the viewer seeing this, I was like, right immediately, I was like, oh, she lying. Like, yeah. something, something's wrong here. I already picked it up, right off the bat. Mm. And then, so we get that scene, and then we get another cut. And we get, like, two cops in there. They're watching football between Gotham and Metropolis, which is one of the many hints in this movie where they keep leading up to that Batman and Superman going to fight. Yeah, I noticed that. I, oh. But they also like football. Like, whoever makes these DC movies, they really like football. It's yeah, always I always see football in their movies. I think it's just a good way to relate to people. <laughs> it's like, kind of like... America's pastime, but I think that's for baseball. But there's also, like, I mean, let's be honest, football is now America's pastime. But aside yeah. from that, like, they could have shown bad, they could have shown basketball, they could they could have shown baseball, like, you know, like, when yeah. we get a nice soccer game going. Facts. They always pick football when it comes to DC. And I, I, that's just something I've noticed. I feel like that has something to do with the whole American breed of hero or something. I don't know. I mean, I guess. I just thought it was, like, a cool little thing that yeah. they just keep adding football to stuff. Um, and then, like, the two cops, they, get they like, respond to a call, and they go into, like, this really broken down, like, a slummy house. Um, yeah, this place is a, is a dump. They walk in. There's a batarang hanging from the wall, so we already know what's going on here. Yeah. And they go down in the basement, and this is what we were talking about earlier about um, what our friends saying they were Hmong people. Um, they, he finds a bunch of women, like, in the basement, behind, like, a cage. And they go um, to let him out, and they're like, no, no, we're good, he's still up there. Yeah, they close the gate back, and he's like, yeah, the demon is still in this bitch. <laughs> like, yeah, we're and fine. So, so one cop goes upstairs, I don't know why you wouldn't take a secondary cop with you. And he's just, you know, patrolling the area. He sees, um, the criminal, or the thug, or whatever... Uh, chained up to what is that? That's a heater, right? It's a heater, right? Radiator. I, th I think it was a radiator. Was yeah, a radiator. radiator. Yeah. I forget the name of the an old style radiator. And he's like, "Oh shit, this dude's like chained up. I wonder who did this." And 
you see Batman in the corner just like trying to hide with his arms out. <laughs> that was such a ridiculous. <laughs> nah, no, no, it was Let's ridiculous. You say it was ridiculous. You, if you turned around and just seen this man, it it would have been scary as hell. Of course, it was scary, <laughs> but like, I'm a, I got the gun in my hands. I got a gun, and I see a crit, and I see like not a criminal, but like. A dude who beat the shit out of this dude and handcuffed him to the a radiator, just chilling with his arms out like this, hoping I don't see him. I, I I'm gonna be scared, but I'm also gonna let out like a little laugh because that shit was funny. <laughs> and there's no way he just dodges that shotgun blast. There's no fucking way. I, like, nah, he moved. I I think he did. He probably like whipped his cape or something. He, like, dashed forward real quick, took the man off guard, and then escaped through a hole in the roof. Oh, yeah, he dashed forward. If you told me, like, yeah, he's got that, you know, that bulletproof cape that, ha- that like, stops kinetic energy or whatever, then I would be like, okay, I get it. But that's just one of the times Batman evades something that no human can, ev- can evade. But, okay, so. um, And this is our first... Yeah, this is our first main Batman scene. Um, and this is where I like, I say like, I like the Batman because he's more of a, he's still more of the myth monster type in Gotham. Which yeah. doesn't make sense though. What do you mean? Because if, <clears throat> so like you see in the movie, like you see Jason Todd's suit. It's not Jason Todd. Um, which we can about? get into that. Oh, go ahead. Good Either day. way, you see Robin's suit, right? That's supposed to be... Like, Robin comes into play, like, years after Batman has become Batman. Yeah. And then Robin, if it, if it's... Let's say it's Dick Grayson's suit. It, okay, uh... Who's, uh who's fucking it, is, suit is it is Dick Grayson, yeah. Okay, so let's say it's Dick Grayson's suit after Dick Grayson stops being Robin. That's still they still work together for a, yeah. like years, so he's been doing this for at least a decade. So yeah. why is he still the the mysterious ghost in the shadows? Like no, well at that's this point the... Gotham should be well acquainted with with uh, yeah they know Batman. they know of the Batman that like I think that's what it is yeah they're just scared of him though like he's yeah like... they're all they're scared of him they don't know who he is and all of that so when they hear oh, yo. For ten years now, there's been this dude dressed as a a bat. Some would say he's like a monster or something who hunts nah. people down yeah. and like not so. hits not so. first and then asks questions later. Yeah, especially with the fact that like he's branding people now. Like, yeah, which doesn't mad. make sense. It doesn't make it made sense if that was Jason Todd suit because after Jason Todd died, Batman did become more brutal. Yeah, that's that's well, why Tim Drake becomes ba- Robin. Because Batman wasn't acting like Batman, but if this is just Dick Grayson and he he's in Bloodhaven now, because no, Dick that's Grayson doesn't... that's not okay. So Zack Snyder like actually talked about this in like tweets and everything. Well, and, like we, this should, universe... we should probably wait. We should probably wait till we get to that part though, because we're not we're almost there, but we're not there yet. Okay, I just I, I no, I just want to get this out of the way because it's a <laughs> it's a short small seed, so it's good to go ahead and explain it. Okay. So at one point before Batman leaves his house, he's he walks past a Robin suit that has jokes on you, Batman, on it. Yeah. And Zack Snyder has confirmed within like interviews and like on Twitter and stuff like that, in this iteration that he was doing, it that the suit belonged to Dick Grayson, but Dick Grayson was the one to be killed. Wait, wait. So what? he, yeah, Dick Grayson was the one to be killed. He only had the one Robin. <laughs> but that, but then what happens with Jason Todd if That's Jason Todd ever like, pops up so in this I world? Don't... It's only Dick Grayson. What? So so Jason Todd never happens, it, and he's not gonna happen. It, That's what he said. Tim Drake never happens. Is never going to happen. And he's not and gonna. Damian Wayne is never going to happen. Nope. Yeah, that doesn't what? make sense. What? What is this movie? I don't know, bro. I Zack Snyder's a good director, but I don't think that approach was was wise. That wasn't that wasn't smart. He he wanted to do his own like take on it though. So, well, when you're making the DC universe and you basically say we're not going to add the other three Robins, 
and Nightwing yeah. is gone. Like, like these are just like random ass characters. These are like pivotal characters yeah. in DC as a whole. Like Nightwing, yeah, you took out Nightwing. What? Exactly. Yeah, bro, that doesn't make sense to he me. He is literally yo, Rob. Oh my God, Dick Grayson, fucking Robin <laughs> is literally the embodiment of a sidekick. Like he is what you think of. Like when, when you, you say sidekick, of a, I yes, think of Robin. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Matter of fact, one would say he's the only sidekick. <laughs> what? He is the sidekick, and you just you killed him, Dick Grayson. Come on, man, that's not smart. He yeah, might have to. Smart. He might have to retcon that, dude. Well, he has room to do, to do it. So he has room to do it. Off the movie for a second. The whole DC universe right now is in shambles, and of course. They've, they've already confirmed that basically they're going to use the Flash movie as a Flashpoint movie to kind of like reset things and to just start again. Okay, okay. Good. See, Marcus, there's hope. There's Good. hope now. Yo, because I'm 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 gonna say this. I'm gonna get this out of the way now. DC is not good at making movies. They got potential. I'll say they got potential. That doesn't mean they're good. They keep yeah. messing it up. Because one, the first Wonder Woman movie was, was boring. Good. It was it was boring. boring. You're talking about the second one. No, I'm talking about the first one. It was boring. I don't think it was boring. It took it way too bad. long to get started, bro. It took way too long. It wasn't bo- as boring as Catwoman with Halle Berry because that movie is. <laughs> <laughs> I will stand by that. That is a trash movie. But, like, the first Wonder Woman movie was boring. But we're not here to talk about yeah. Wonder Woman. Yeah, no, we're no, here no. to talk about Batman versus Superman. And oh, God. I, I'm going to... When we get to the part, it's I'm all good. Tear Sometimes it happens. Apart, bro. <laughs> so, oh, I'm going to tear this apart. <sighs> so, but, we get past the cops. Now we're in Lois Lane's apartment as she's, like, taking a bath. And hmm. she's a bathtub detective because she's looking at her stuff. Yo. And basically on this scene... Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Continue. Let's talk about oh, it, though. Keep going. <laughs> so, basically, all this scene is, is, like, she's sitting there looking at stuff. Hen- uh, Henry Cavill comes in, Clark Kent, and he's like, I don't care what they say about it. And then they have sex in a bathtub. No. Okay. So, let's talk about how this bathtub is in the middle of the room. Okay? Not connected oh, really? to any pipes. Yes. I thought it was on the wall. I thought it was next to the wall. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it was. I'm pretty sure it's in the middle of the room. Nah, dude. No, I it think was it next to a next window. To it was next. Yeah, to it a was window. next to the window. Yeah. Okay. 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 Whatever. <laughs> it was next to a window. In my mind, it was in. It was in the middle of the room. Right. <laughs> then let's talk about how this man took off his shirt, but kept his socks, his pants, his underwear, all that on. And climbed into this bathtub. Hey, man. Sometimes you guys gotta no, have a free spirit. That is weird. Sometimes that you is, gotta have. You gotta Superman. embrace what does he it, man. Care? You're Superman. You are Superman. You can move faster than the speed of sound. You could have taken off your underwear, pants, and socks before she had time to blink. It's about it's about showing your free spirit, man. It's about not no, caring about what the clothes weird. happen to it's be. It's about wet, being bro. romantic. Weird. That's not romantic. That's weird. You have. Yo, that's the death. Nah. Like, yo, he had too many clothes on to do what he was trying to do. Also, the water was way too high for him to just climb in there. You hey, bro, saw he the didn't water care. spill over. No, bro, that's you weird. You didn't care, bro. bro. Who's going to clean that up? Not they me. They will. They will. Not me. He could just, like. <laughs> he, Why would you? <laughs> he could just, yo. like, Superman 2 wind breath it away, you know? Yo, nah, man. That was. Y'all know that was weird. It was of course, weird. it was weird, but I at the know like, for a fact if that some if weird. somebody does it, and it, I'm just like, you know what? Now you think about it, if they don't care, if they Yo, don't okay. care, then it is. Nah, what it okay. Is. So you telling me, you telling me, you taking a bath, right? You relaxing, you on your phone, right? And your significant other walks in, and they're just like, I don't care what they say about me, and then immediately gets into the bathtub with you with that clothes still on. You're not gonna be like, Yo, what is you doing? I'm gonna get freaky, and I'll be like, No, hey, I'm no, you know, you know for a fact, you're gonna be like, Yo, if you going like, you can get in. But, like, take your clothes off. What are you doing? Nah, I wouldn't care. If it was me no. in the bathtub, I wouldn't care. They, they ain't my clothes, so I wouldn't what? care. <laughs> you bugging. You bugging. And nah, he bro, left I'm his pretty... socks on, bro. And I think that's what's really messing with me. Bro, <laughs> wet socks. <laughs> wet socks, my man? I know you not from Earth, but you was, you was raised on it. From, like, day Maybe... two of your life on, you was raised on Earth. You should know wet socks, man. Maybe that's his kink. We never know. So you telling me. <laughs> 
this man saves the world, but you throw some wet socks in his face, and he's like, oh, shit. Oh my gosh. Which <laughs> Going to back to Batman, Devin. <laughs> we switch back to the Batcave and we have Alfred and Bruce talking. Which I like Alfred. Alfred in was this dope. movie? I did too. Alfred was dope. Alfred Alfred's a fuck, goat in this movie. Him. I fucked with him. And you know, we we apparently see Bruce is hunting down like high priority targets with the name White Portuguese. Um looking into Lex Luthor. I'm assuming he already knows about the Kryptonite. No, since he's hunting down this stuff, he, like no, this he, information, he just has an idea that he's looking for somebody named the White Portuguese because it will have like information he needs. And then he he said, and then Alfred comes in and he's like, "Hey man, like Gotham is changing you. Like you seem you seem pissed. You know, this man needs a Snickers. That's what he needs. And he's saying like you're just you're just different. You're not the same dude that you used to be. While also throwing some shade at at saying you know you're not. Bruce Wayne, like how you should be Bruce Wayne. You shouldn't be Batman, you know. You have a life. Go yeah. live it. But Bruce, as always, is like, I'm Batman, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. But take that man to counseling. And then we yeah, get sorry. Larry Larry puts down this this sweet line that we get. Uh we get the awesome line that is fever can turn good men cruel. Is that is Which, that correct? Yeah, I love that line. A fever could turn good men cruel. Yeah. A fever? Well, it's just kind of like... A fever as in the sense of something that's sweeping his mind. That's like infesting his mind. That's not what a fever is. Okay. Well, and then uh, moving on from that, we get introduced to Lex Luthor. And then you, I see you put in parentheses Junior because his yeah. father's name so is also Lex. He was sitting there <laughs> and he was talking about how it's his father's company. And it was like he's like now running it, so technically he's Lex Luthor Jr. Which when you, is dumb. There is, there is a Lex Luthor Jr. There is a Lex Luthor Jr. Yes, but he is the son of Lex Luthor and Lois Lane Luthor. Maybe so again. A, Zach, yeah, go ahead. what are you doing? <clears throat> maybe you doing? maybe this is just his iteration. You know, like, it, it, but he's not making good decisions, bro. I mean, when it comes to like having a son and not and it not being Lois Lane, I that that's a that's a different iteration I can get by because with Marvel and stuff they do similar things like oh this person, this person's father or son, it yeah. uh is with this different person rather than the person of the comics. So I get it, um, but if he is a junior and the real Lex Luthor comes comes through. Then I will be a little more happy with how they wanted to portray Junior yeah. out here. I can see that, but like, so also the fact that we like when we get introduced to this man, he's sitting there playing basketball, and then he goes and he talks to a bunch of these people, which I think it's like a senator and then a people couple of power, other people, pretty much. yeah, people with power. And he's talking about Kryptonite and how he wants to make weapons to deal with Superman and anything that can like. Well, he, he never said Superman future. first. He said, "Yeah, there are people. There are people like Superman now that we know because, yeah, and, and we find out later in the movie that Lex Luthor Jr. knows about metahumans, and he's like, well, what can a what can a human do about these people? What if they just turn bad? So now let's why don't we get Kryptonite to stop these metahumans? Well, so my thing is like, and how Superman. does he know Kryptonite? How does he know? Not only how does he know it exists, but how does he know it can take down Superman? They tested it on General Zod's body. They explained. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They explained all that, and they're like, the only thing that, that we could that. get to crack, you know, General Zod's body was this kryptonite. They. So, you know. But, yeah, they said something about like when uh, when they use kryptonite on the body, it showed cellular decomposition. Oh, yeah. Okay, but my other question is, how they even know it existed? Well, they they found it on the ship. Yeah, I, I, that was one of the things they were talking about. They, like they found it within the ship, and I think the kryptonite is more is like why it's on this ship is explained in Superman move in the Superman movie, the Man of Steel. But yeah. yeah, so pretty much they find the kryptonite. They're like, oh, we tested it on his body, and it breaks their stuff down. We should use this on all metahumans. Obviously, he doesn't know that this. 
doesn't work on other metahumans, yeah. just people of Krypton. But I can forgive that. He just thinks this hurts a god. Let's stop you these problem. demigods. Yeah. And then, like, he's in there and he's talking about, like, one weapons. Most of them are just like, okay, whatever. And then they move on. But he makes a deal with the one dude. He's like, um, I can't remember exactly what the deal was. But Lex got access to the fallen Krypton ship so he could do experiments and stuff. I think it was if they can have access to the weapon, he gets access to the fallen ship. Yeah, General Zod's ship. I think that was it. General Zod's body, and I don't remember what the third one was. Yeah. <clears throat> and then, right after making this agreement, he sticks a cherry jello rancher to this dude's mouth. I wasn't going to talk about that, but... <laughs> no! No, because we're talking about... Yo! <laughs> what? Like, I... It's what? just who, it's just how they ask him to play it, man. I don't I don't know why they insist on him being this way. Nah. But this old I, <laughs> Mitch McConnell looking dude was sitting there in fear as Lex Luthor put a Jolly Rancher to his mouth. No, like, that wasn't fear. It's that was fear. That was annoyance. That was annoyance. I would have been annoyed if somebody just put a Jolly Rancher in my no, mouth. I would have Matter of fact, it wouldn't have yeah. even gotten that far. I that's unrealistic. The minute he puts it in my mouth, I'm uh, slapping. I'm like, "What the freak are you doing, bro? I just gave you this access. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't yeah. not like, cool. What, you, what? Putting food in my mouth, like you fucking. Little. Either way, it's it, it was weird. And, and that's what we're dealing yeah. with. Yeah. On to uh, the next scene, we get uh, you know, little different types of scenes of people being mad at Superman for all the chaos and bloodshed, and all of that that comes in his wake and whatnot, and. I, isn't this like while he's also saving people? Like it flashes between people hating him and him saving people. Um, I feel like I think there was like a little bit of that, but the main stuff is like you hear this going on while, um, the dude from earlier Wallace is like yeah, wheeling up legs. Yeah, he's wheeling up to the Superman statue and he like writes false god on it. And here's my thing: like, okay, I definitely understand the anger towards Superman. I get it. Like, you you start fighting this dude throughout the city. You kill thousands and thousands of people. And then, like, you don't tell anybody. You don't, you don't say a word. Yeah. But then you, like, start saving the day here and there and there. I wouldn't be mad. I'd just be like, what the fuck is this dude doing? I would just be confused as hell. Because you don't talk to us about what the fuck happened, but you're saving the day, at, like, from natural disaster, from bank robberies, from all of that. Like, what happened to the first time, bro? I need a statement. Yeah. I would have been confused. So I, I get why senators and, and shit is mad. I don't get why people, like, normal citizens are mad. I don't get that. Well, he's just mad because, like, he lost his legs. I know he's mad he lost his legs. Like, his wife left him. All of that happened, like. And it's also I a fear it. thing. Like, if you've lived your whole life and pretty normal, and all of a sudden now there's this this god, god basically. fighting in your city. <laughs> yeah. You're going to have some sort of, like, feeling. You're either going to like it or you're going to hate it. Which I is guess. the duality of man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, so and we go from that, and then we jump again. This is what I mean by jumping. We get, like, a short scene, and then, like, it cuts between characters. Like, a lot. I mean, it's about two heroes, so it's gonna have to cut. Yeah, I just... I felt like it could have been done a little bit differently, but, yeah. That's I get what you're saying. I spent happen. more time on one. Yeah. yeah. Um, But Clark goes to Gotham, and he, he wants to ask about the girl he saw in the news. Like, the first one talking about him. And then they were like, oh, she doesn't live here anymore. And then... He also gets news about, like, they're like, you better get out of here before he shows up. Um, he's like, who's this person? This is when he finds out about Batman and people being yeah. scared of him. A vigilante who, like, Brand takes crime into his own hands. So, Which you know. Superman is also the same thing. Like, he doesn't work for any government. So, like. Right. So, for him to for him to say, like, a vigilante is out here, like, solving crime and stuff like that in his own hands is kind of a. Uh, it's, it's a little hypocritical. hypocritical of him to think, yeah. like, <laughs> he's wrong, so... Like, you gotta stop doing this, as he, like, our days or so later, he smashed a dude through a wall. Like, like bitch, you gotta stop doing this fuck. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, and then we go from there. Bruce is in a fight club. Like, he's trying to get information about the white Portuguese. And he copies, a like, a phone of, like, the target he was following. Which mm-hmm. is also, again, weird, because, like, why is he doing this as... Why, why would Bruce Wayne be asking about the white Portuguese? Yeah, I don't know, but I don't understand like, that. Well, he never asked the dude about the white Portuguese. I don't think. He was just, like, talking to the dude, and then, like, when the guy set his phone down, he copied it. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll let it slide, I'll let it slide. Um, and then he gets the yeah, phone, realizes he has the information, and then we go back to Clark at <laughs> the Daily Planet, and he's, like, asking his boss, he's like, yo, we should be reporting on this Batman figure, he's a menace to society. Uh, and then his boss is like, no. Yeah, and Lawrence no, Fishburne is like, no. Because you do news in Metropolis, not in Gotham. Exactly. Yeah, that's well. I, at first, I was wondering why they wouldn't do a story on a vigilante who's like taking crime to his own hands, and then I was like, "Wait, this isn't even your city, bro!" Like, what? Yeah. And then we go from Clark. We go to Lois Lane, where she was like thinking about everything that happened in Africa, and she's like, "Wait a minute!" She pulls out a journal and has a bullet in it, and, and... she go, "Oh, go ahead." Yeah, and I was gonna say that this bullet, she she realizes quickly, like, hey, nobody nobody normal makes these bullets. So, she she starts thinking, like, I think she she goes to get information from one of her senator friends and stuff that didn't want to help her at first, but you know he later comes to help, and he's like, you know, that's a bullet that's not well. Before all that, she just finds out that this is not a bullet that is sold in the black market, and it's not used by any type of military personnel. Which, again, why does she have this access? She, hey, she's, you just know people, she's, bro. A, she's an everyday news reporter. Also, how does she make it all the way back to the states without realizing this bullet? Like, if this, like, because she doesn't have military clearance, so she's not going to be on a military flight. I think so she, she just like take... picked up the book and just like forgot that it was shot, and then okay, she's like, but, maybe the bullet's still I'm, in the book. What I'm saying is, so she, she since she has no military clearance, she's not going to be on a military flight, which means she Ooh. has to fly commercial, which means she has to go through a metal detector. Oh, that's right. It's supposed it should have picked up the bullet. That's so true. So how did you make it all the way back well, maybe, to Metropolis? Maybe from it was Africa. maybe maybe she went on like a private jet or something. Like when they rescued her, you know, maybe they just took like a chopper or something back. Okay, You're if she's taking... if she's reporting on like a warlord terrorist type thing, I feel like she may have had some kind of military thing. Because if Jimmy Olsen was with her, like he was CIA. Yeah, I I, I don't think they went through like but normal. She flight. wasn't CIA. She didn't know he was yeah. CIA. So but if she was there. I just don't think that it was normal accident, flight. She would have had military with her. I just don't think that it was like normal flight. I think it was like a private eye, a private air company or some shit like that. I don't think she went, like, on a regular plane. A lot of what-ifs explain <laughs> something. I mean, it's a movie. Like, you're gonna have a lot of what-ifs. <laughs> I'm just saying, bro. It's... Come on, man. And then we go to Lex, who meets up with Senator June. Who I, I like her spunk. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I hope... You and, like you June know... Spunk? I, I like her spunk. Um, June denies his request of for the kryptonite shipment uh, because she says having weapons like that wouldn't be good for anyone, which, you know, I agree. I, I agree. And then Lex threatens her and says, um, you know, by by saying, you know, this is for the greater good and all of this and that. But she ain't taking all of that. Um, and Lex delivers this whole or no, she delivers this whole spiel about you can cover it up, sugarcoat it, pee in a jar, call it grandma's tea. I'm not going to take the bait. Which, I I like that. I like yeah. that. Again, I like her spunk. She says she ain't drinking it. Um, also, during this whole time, though, Lex is also talking about how his father is like, this is my father's house. He he created this entire like room and everything. He's like, wouldn't let me change anything. And then he was like, do you think, and then right as she's about to leave, he's like, do you think he'd mind if I changed one thing as if she would, like, care? Like, she's like, I yeah, So like, you just told why? her, he said you can't change nothing, so why would you ask the question, do you think he'd mind if I change one? Obviously, nigga. Yeah. Is this for a monologue? 
Yeah. It's honestly just for monologuing purposes. Just so he could be like flip a painting around because when he's like, um, he delivers a line, the devils don't come from below, they come from the sky, meaning he's talking about Superman. Yeah. Obviously, Lex Luthor hates Superman. We get it. The whole monologuing thing just brings out like what kind of character Lex Luthor is, which nobody agreed with. Um, then we go back to Bruce Wayne, who has a nightmare, where he's visiting his parents' grave. But he's interrupted by a man-bat creature. So it's a little nightmare, and he wakes up. Yeah, which um, I'd like to hope that the reference was actually to man-bat. So I'm going to take it that way. I don't know. But I see you have in your notes that it's like a physical representation, that he's becoming a monster. Yeah. And, you know, he's, he's, he's obsessed with, with, with Superman. And trying to find this white Portuguese. Um, so Bruce wakes up in his amazing lake house, apparently. I loved the house. I wanted it I, so bad. I didn't notice that there was a girl in the bed. But now that I see, like, yeah. there was a girl in the bed. See, okay. That's what Bruce Wayne's supposed to be doing. <laughs> As Bruce Wayne, that is what he's supposed to be doing. He's yeah, supposed to be spending it. ridiculous amounts of money for no reason. He's supposed to be buying hotels so models can swim in the fountain. He's supposed to be acting like that's what he should be doing. And... Just random. He's supposed to be an eccentric <laughs> playboy billionaire. That is what he is. And the guy who plays Callan, he gets the information from that guy, or Callan, the guy who plays the whatever. He gets the information from one of the top guys working for Lex, and he figures where he can find more information on this stuff. He wants to go as Batman, and Alfred, you know, the goat comes and says, you don't have to go as Batman because Bruce Wayne got invited. As he whips out his golden ticket, like, whoosha. I like his little lines where, like, he's like, uh, something about preserving the lineage, like, the the Wayne lineage, not that he would have one anyways. Oh, yeah. So All throughout this movie, he's making, like, quips towards Batman, like... Oh, he's throwing shade. He's like, you're never gonna find a woman, you're never gonna have a child, you're wasting your life. And he and Batman. I mean, he's Batman. Like uh, he believes he's Batman. He doesn't care. But either way, Alfred got them shots, boy. Okay, hold on. That whole "you're never gonna have a child" comment would have been the perfect time for him to make uh, like a second reference to Dick Grayson dying. He well, he should have said, "I had a child," because yeah. the, all the Robins are his sons, whether biologically or through adoption. Does he admit that though? Like, has he ever admitted that? What? Like that, that th- they're know. like his sons. Yes. No. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. At least Bruce Wayne. Bruce movie. Wayne adopts every single child that becomes yeah. Robin. Huh. Every single one. Wait, but didn't Dick Grayson have a family? They died. Oh, they, they died. died. That, that's right. That's right. The every Robin's that family that is dead or evil. Dang. Yeah. Well, and then, well, moving on, uh, we go back to the Robin suit. I did not know it was a Robin suit. Yeah. Uh, so I, you guys explaining that makes sense now. What, man? Come on. There was I, R- all I saw was the Joker's thing. I was trying to read that, and I completely okay. bypassed the Robin suit. Okay. And then, um, and then, oh, go ahead, Larry. I was just saying that was like the main thing we got into earlier about the whole Robins. And yeah. We go Upsetting. from there, and this is when actually, this is when like Bruce actually goes to the uh, gala, which I think it's like a library benefit. You're. Something like that. Uh, one of the first things we see is that um, Gal Gadot's here, Diana, which we know is Wonder Woman. You're, I mean, we know by now. Yeah, you, we, if you, heard you, know podcasts, you know it's but... Wonder Woman. She's here. And I think, like, Bruce sees her and is like, damn. And then, like, Lex Luthor gets up and he's giving a speech and he's talking way too much. This man is a nutcase because yeah. he's just like, trailing losing his sentences keeps going on and then it, and like, then we get bruce yeah. uh we get bruce basically saying or talking to alfred about hey where are the servers and clark is there because you know he's a reporter he got obviously got invited and he he with his super hearing he hears bruce talking to alfred and he's a little suspicious. He's like, well, why is one of the richest men in the world, like, talking through an earpiece? And he just eyes him down as Bruce goes to the servers to plant his device to get the data or whatever. 
Which, um, like, he's doing that, and uh-huh. he gets... I guess that's also in a little Bruce Wayne, actual Bruce Wayne moment. He, like, gets stopped by uh, one of Lex's, like, girls. Uh, yeah, his secretary confidant or whatever. Or whatever. I would say like, confidant. Yeah, confidant's good. And he's like, I thought the bathroom was down here. Uh, yeah, yeah he's all, he was playing but, off uh, like he was drunk or whatever. Yeah. And then we go back up, and this is the actual first time that Clark and Bruce meet. And yeah. he, he's like... So do you have any word on like the Bat Vigilante? Because I'm pretty sure at this point, like he's listening in on the earpiece. He knows who he is. Yeah, and you know Bruce is just basically admitting that he sides with the Vigilante. Which, if you're trying to keep your cover, I wouldn't. Not a I would, thing. I wouldn't. Because Bruce Wayne openly go like he openly goes against Batman. Does so he really? Don't, okay, yeah, I so thought people so. don't think he's Batman. I yeah. thought so. Like, what? And then we got... <laughs> and then we get we get a couple... We get a couple of good references here. Um, We get that... Uh, we have... Well, first we have Clark saying, you know, I don't act kindly to clowns in suits and stuff like that. No, th- that was Bruce who said that. That was Bruce who said that. Yeah, he's oh, like, okay. he was sitting there. He's talking about how like Gotham makes people like a little like unwary, and he's like, we don't have a good record with clowns dressed in suits. Yeah, that's that is definitely a Joker reference, but like, I'm pretty sure he was also talking about Superman. Yeah, it was like a two way like two way hit. And Bruce basically says, "Oh, I know you. You're Clark Kent. You suck Superman's dick in the paper, huh?" So don't come at me for no bullshit about Batman, okay? Do I Think of what you know. Do I own the place you work? Because you're not about to work for him much longer. <laughs> Which and, is another, like, that's another thing, like, Bruce Wayne would have done. He would have been like, yo, I my could man, buy your, off, I bro. Could buy your place. Bro, like, like, yeah. I could buy your entire company and fire you because like, I do I Do I own that yet? Like, <laughs> like pretty sure that's what he said. At one point, Bruce Wayne was a trillionaire, bro. This man is a billionaire. Like, B for ballin'. B for Bruce, bro. That's what the billionaire stands for. That's what the B in billionaire. It stands for Bruce. And then and then we got Lex moseying on over. And uh, he says, you know, Bruce Wayne meets Clark Kent, which I'm assuming Clark is a pretty famous reporter, considering he's known by Lex Luthor like this. Um, they both, you know, shake Lex's hands and, you know, uh, Lex is like, oh, you got a, you got a strong grip. Would not want to pick a fight with you. Yeah. And at this point, honestly, it, I just sighed because that is such an obvious foreshadowing. It's so obvious. I feel like they try too hard when it comes to like making those. I, they're cool, but it's too much. It's There's too, too many much. references about it. And this is also where you were like, yeah, Lex probably knows who both these people are. I don't think he. Oh, okay. Yeah. I like okay. It comes in know. like further down, but I I feel like this is when we eventually will get knowledge that he does for a fact know who everyone is. So I didn't know that. I mean, I knew he knew who who Superman was. I didn't know that he knew at that moment. I'm fairly I thought he certain. Knew later, I'm fairly certain he did. That's why, as we'll come to find out, all the strings he's been pulling throughout this entire movie have happened. That's wild. Okay. Yeah. Which. I think is great. Like you portrayed him as a genius. He figured all yeah. this shit out. I just wish he acted different. That's it. The way he orchestrated this whole movie, because this is Lex who started this. Lex is the reason this movie's a thing. They yeah, fucked it they up by legal. him being so childish. And then like, oh, sorry, Harper. Whew. Bring some cranberry juice. Uh, <laughs> cranberry uh, juice gave you Harper. Probably. He's drinking know. it for the Harper. Yeah, um, Batman goes back to get his little, like, data thingy, but he was like, oh, sh- it's not here, and, like, Diana looks at him, and she's like, oh, and then scurries off, so no, she, she took, say, oh, she's like, yeah, I stole that shit, yeah, she, she took his thing, and before Bruce can get to her, like, she goes out in, like, her car, and right as about, Clark was about to, like, in, in her, not intercept, intervene. basically, intervene, yeah, he was about to intervene with Bruce, but he sees like a news flash of um a building a on fire, building. and he's like, yep. "Well, I gotta be Superman," and dashes off to save the day. And he saves the people in the building, 
and like oh here's where the montage of him saving stuff yeah comes. so he's standing in the group like all these people looking at him looking at him like a god uh which is actually a really good scene i thought it was pretty dope i personally i wouldn't have been like yo this man's a god i'm not gonna say that i'm like i don't know how you got these powers bro but you got them and i respect it i ain't gonna put my hands on you like that like that's just straight yeah. up weird but it was a nice scene and it just brings me back to everybody shitting on him and and whatnot while he's saving people clearly i don't i don't get how people have open hate for him literally saving the day yeah like i get you're mad that he wrecked the city but if if this is him, like i would have at least made some type of connection oh he's either atoning for his sins or maybe he's not the guy we thought he was but he still needs to speak about it like but also at the end of the day like they're all they're all they're talking about like should his powers be regulated and checked by the government should he work for the government but like if i always hate when they bring that up man yeah that's well it's a big thing in superheroes like I hate that you you can't regulate a superhuman. Like don't yeah. do it. You're just gonna make a villain. Like please stop. Quite, quite literally. But like you also gotta think like even though there was a lot of destruction, what he did, how much more destruction would Zod have done if he didn't kill him? But you also have to remember <laughs> people people don't understand what they fear. Like, yeah. Or and like, I don't think or with what they Zod. Hate. Yeah, and with Zod dead. You don't know what happened. Like, you will never know until he speaks about it. So, the fact that he didn't talk to anybody about this officially... No, they know what happened. You have to remember, like, when he was fighting Zod, Zod was trying to kill the family. Uh, He was trying to kill a family with his, like, heat vision. And huh. Superman snapped his neck. Yeah. So, people are going to talk about how Superman just smacked, like, snapped this dude's neck. But did anybody see that? Like, did people yes, see that? Yes, the, the family... The family that Zod was trying to burn with their heat vision were, like, in a corner. That's what I'm saying. Like, are they... But, like, if they're the only witnesses, like, again, it's hard to believe once you see a whole city getting destroyed due to this fight and stuff, and all you got is the word of the dude who participated in this fight and a very small group of people compared to a city that doesn't know what's going on. But you have to remember, like, they're going to check up on these people. They're going to get their information. They're going to uh, interview them on, like, what happened. Yeah. I mean, like, I get just it. Just, like, with any, like, tra- tragic event, people survive. Like, you ha- they ha- they take people and they, like, they interview them. Like, so what were you thinking when this was going on? So, like, uh, what did you do? Da, 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 da. And in those interviews, people are going to talk about, yes, the, the villain was trying to burn... Uh, like he was trying to kill us with his heat vision, and Superman snapped his neck. They saw that happen. Okay, I mean, okay. I just also I'm I pretty sure they're don't... in a bank or some building with cameras, so like there's footage of it. Yeah. Okay. Somewhere else, everyone I, I, like I, I, has probably seen it. And like, with just, all I'm this... just trying to figure out why people were just so mad. You know what I mean? Like, if if this 18 months later, you're still mad. Oh, we got all the news like within the first month. You get all the news you need. At, people I hate things they don't understand. Why? Do, yeah. Why are people homophobic? Like they're not affecting your life. Why are you? Why do you hate them? People yeah, hate it's, what they it's, fear, what they, don't, what they don't, understand. don't understand. I think I think the senator made some pretty good points to it though. Like she she came up with some pretty good arguments. Um, I don't remember all of them, but I think she was like, they were asking her if this person is like really like would you now that he's here would you want a world without it or with him like without him or with him and she's like well he's already here and you know people have died like we can't take that away so what are we going to do if this happens again so it's it's questions that she so she, she answers questions with another question which i kind of She's a politician. That's her job. Yeah, yeah. I, I admire that. Cause, also, like you have yeah. to, like you have to understand, like people. There's always like for people who hate him, there's that that servicing fear, and for people who even love him, there's probably that underlying fear. Like, what happens if he that? like gets angry? You right? Like, yeah. who? Yeah. Like, can we really stop him? 
Yeah, so like I, this I man, get... yeah, so like that's why people are still angry at him. And also because the they fact... like they probably lost loved ones, like they probably lost like, like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And there's also the fact that what it's only been what maybe two three years that Superman it's been actually, eighteen months that Superman's actually been Superman. It's a year and a half. <sighs> yeah. So like yeah, he's still he's still new, and like in the beginning of you like showing yourself. We had this like tragedy yeah. that like you weren't the cause of, but like you were involved in. So like you have to like, are you gonna be? Are you just gonna like? Let's say you had somebody in Metropolis when Superman and Zod is like they're going at it, mm-hmm. and like yeah, you probably know that like oh Superman was just trying to save the day, but like. You you lost someone in that tragedy, and grief makes like grief grief will like warp your your logic on things. Yeah. Oh. And I guess uh, continuing uh, this because we're about an hour in, and I don't even think we're halfway through the movie. Uh, we're about halfway there, I would say. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, gotta hurry up though. Yeah. Yeah. So. Basically, after this, Superman's kind of like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. He's like, people are blaming me to be a monster. I'm trying to be good. I'm trying to say everyone, but everyone still looks at me bad. And then he's like, mm-hmm. okay, I'll, I'll take my mind off of it. I'll go do more research on the Batman. And this is also when we get information that people that have been branded with the, the Bat symbol uh-huh. get killed in prison. If anyone has that, they get killed. So Batman is serving as like the judge joint executioner in this. Which again doesn't make sense. I don't sense. think he knows that he's No, he's the he's world's greatest detective. He would know. Yeah. He is literally the world's greatest detective. I mean, I get there is that, no but way he doesn't in know. this in this movie, I don't think he knows. What like Yo. I get I get that they want to portray him as I know Batman is like a genius, but in this movie he's not. In this movie, he's not the comics. They're reporting on the news, though, and everything. So he's definitely seen this. I mean, clearly he didn't even know that his own... uh, The person that he worked for wasn't getting his checks and is working with Lex Luthor. Like, he doesn't know that. So, like, he doesn't even know what's under his nose. So I can believe that he doesn't know these people are getting killed. Like, he's so focused on his goal. I feel like he's not. He's so focused on being being Batman. Batman. Yeah. So like he, it makes like if he's focused on being Batman, it makes sense for him not to be like that concerned with like Bruce Wayne's life. But like this is stuff that actively ties to Batman. Like like people with your mark are getting killed in prison. Because right, right, but... because he's so involved in Batman's life and he's so invested in Batman's life. Well, his Batman like persona, he should have known that people are dying because they have his symbol on them. I because mean, it's in, news on Batman. In this movie though, I don't think he knows. Like. There's no sign of him knowing that these people die out. I think he just sends them to prison and he just forgets he, about them right if after. He didn't know. Why would he go through the effort of branding them anyway? He's making sure they get their I think, thank you. Justice. Thank you. I think they touch on that though. I think he's just angry. Like they say, oh, he's just getting more and more brutal. Like he's just branding yeah. them. Like I don't think he realizes the consequences of his actions. He's making sure they get what they deserve. By technically, he's not the one killing them, but he is. He's making sure they get justice. What do they? This get? man has bodies, plural, bodies. I don't know. If, one if, way or another, he has bodies. Him saying like he's not di- directly killing them doesn't make sense with this movie because he kills people in this movie with his by, by his hands. He kills people. Like I don't. If he wanted somebody dead, he could kill them right there and then. I don't get why he has to go through that whole entire thing unless he didn't know because he had no hesitation pulling the trigger and blowing up people in cars. Those weren't rubber bullets. Those were real bullets. So See, I don't I don't I don't understand this middleman thing unless he didn't know. I'm going to believe the opposite that like if he knows and that's the reason he's going through the effort of actually breaking them. <laughs> Because no uh, dude's going to think... be like, I don't know what's happening, but I'm going to brand them for now on. But he also brand like, one dude, like, three or four times. So, like, I think he's just doing this out of anger. Yeah, but e- either way, we learn that these people get, like, killed in prison. 
because we see the criminal from earlier get like in the the courtyard. He gets one shanked. dude like walks up to him, gives him the old rapid shank three thousand. <laughs> the rapid shank. That man was going quick though. Did you see? He was like, da, 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 da. yeah, that's Colby getting shanked. <laughs> yeah. He's dead. It wasn't just. A, it wasn't a one and done. It was like thirty. No, Eight. you don't just shank somebody once. Because you have to think like. There, these are these are handmade shanks in prison, right? Because they can't get knives. Yeah, so they're right. Not the so these are. Things. This is probably like uh, a toothbrush filed down, like a razor somehow snuck into prison and like like taped onto something. Like I don't know how they fucking make yeah. shanks in prison. I really don't. Like, shit weird. Like this is like these are handmade shit that they can like like shanks. Some shanks are literally designed to like you stick it in them a couple times and it breaks off in them. Yeah. Like. So like you have to like really like. Do you see how big you gotta, that dude you was? You gotta stab him multiple times if you. Man really had Batista to arms. He he was gonna kill him. But yeah. <laughs> we're bad at my notes here. We're Batista we're at the point where Lois Lane continues to track down this bullet, and yeah. the issue that Wait, went no, down no, no, in no, Africa. No no no. We're at Lex Luthor comes forward. back. Yeah. Oh, so okay. Lex Luthor comes back in the picture, and he. Gives uh, Wallace, the dude who lost his legs from earlier, a, like a job. He's like, I just need you to do something for me. Which turns out to be he is another person to speak against just, Superman. Just a bait at this point. Yeah, Lex is trying to gain leverage. And now Lois Lane, she's just doing more detective stuff. That She's like, where is this bullet from? Which she and, finds out later. Yeah. And then like Bruce and Diana meet at another party or place. I honestly can't remember where. And I Bruce is like, give me my data back. And she's like, it's already in your car. And he's like, oh, okay. And then. Uh, that scene was not necessary. Yeah. If she was just going to give it back. She could have just left a note. Here's your here's well, your drive. You know? It was for them to meet because she was like, uh, Lex has something very important of mine, which turned, it was a picture of her as Wonder Woman. So that's how like he knew about her. And she was mm. trying to get that picture so it didn't like leak out. Okay. And that's also where I was like. I'm fairly certain this is how he knew the other people. Like, that was the definite point that I was like, yeah, he knows who Superman is, he knows who Batman is. I don't know how he finds, like, the information on how he found out who Batman is. Batman keeps his shit tight, so I don't know how he knew because he's fucking Batman. Bruce Wayne is Batman. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. He may have slipped up at some point. We we don't know. Lex Luthor no, has ways. because he's fucking Batman. <laughs> That is just, oh but nobody God. knows Clark Kent is Superman. That's that 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 baffles me, and I won't get in on that because that's a whole well, other it, conversation. It goes it goes beyond just like the glasses and the fucking fedora. Like it, like Clark Kent also like acts different. Like he acts, he stutters. He like he's bro. Me, like, it's his face. I know, but like people are it like, is... yeah, even though he looks like Superman, they can't. And like in their minds, they're like, there's no way. This stuttering, clumsy, like nah, bro, nerdy Who of a is? dude. Is that ain't gonna man. fly so far. That ain't gonna fly so far. After you realize that they're not in the same room, you can't get a hold of him while Superman, while you see Superman, the man is his whole face. I would have been like, no, bro. I know you're Superman. Wait you have the same face. You disappear oh, when dude. shit goes down, bro. Like somebody's definitely going to find out. Okay, it, we got to get to this next part. We got to get to this next part cuz I'm about oh, to yeah. turn this shit up. <laughs> we get a nightmare Larry. sequence. We get the nightmare sequence. Batman like we just get a cut where Batman's out in like this desert area. He has a trench coat on, he has guns, and he's meeting with this one dude and they open up the box. It's green glowing, so we think it's a thing of kryptonite. But it turns out to be a ploy for them to try to capture Batman. As Batman like pulls out the Glock and just starts shooting people. Yeah, because they start they, no, no. they start shooting his people. Let yeah. him get through this whole sequence, bro. Let yeah, yeah. and then, like he goes outside. There's parademons flying around. These big like insect like creatures. People are getting shot. People are getting snatched up in the air. Eventually, Batman gets take captured and taken down to like this little underground bunker where there's other people chained up. And he's like, "Oh, what's going on here?" And then you also see, like, the guards and soldiers have Superman patches. So Superman's apparently, like, evil, has an army. And then, which is confirmed because seconds later, uh, Superman just kind of, like, flies down in there looking super angry and mean. 
And for no reason at all, he just looks at the two other people and just cuts them in half with his laser vision. And then looks at Bruce, unmasks them, and basically, I can't remember what they said, but he disembowels Batman. All, like, Joker and Justice style. And we, this is like a whole thing that's supposed to, like, foreshadow Darkseid coming. As we see, like, the big Omega symbol in the ground, like, at the very yeah. beginning of the end. And all that happens, and then, like, he wakes up to, like, this swirling vortex where we see the Flash for the first time. So yeah. the Flash is sitting there, and he's, like, uh, telling Bruce, like, Lois Lane is the key. Something's coming, and you need to find the others. And you were right about him. Like, you were, he says, you were right about him. Yeah, you were right Lois about Lane him. Lois Lane is the key. Lois Lane's the key. to find us. To find it, which is meaning the other metas who will come to form the Justice League. And, and he's like, "Oh, I'm too, I'm too early." Yeah, he's like, "I'm, I'm too early," <clears throat> and that's that whole scene just in there. Now let's break this motherfucker down. Okay, first of all, <laughs> why? What do you mean, why? Why does Batman have guns? Because it's apocalypse time. Apocalypse. It's, it's no. apocalypse. No, no, no. Because Batman's entire thing, his his one. Thing. You take away everything else. You take away the fact that he's a genius. You take away the fact that he's the world's greatest detective. You take the fact that he's like, like the best at keeping his secret identity. His one thing is he does not kill. It doesn't matter what happens. What literally? That's the whole, Jason Todd entire thing is the fact that Batman did not kill Joker. Because I know, I, Larry, I know for a fact you've seen Under the Red Hood. Oh yeah. Several times. And J- J- I don't know if you've seen it. Yeah, I've seen it. But Jason Todd goes on a entire monologue about, yo, I'm not talking about Penguin. I'm not talking about Dang. I'm talking about Joker. Just yeah. the Joker. Because he took you from me. And Batman said no. Because if I did that, I would never stop. So that is his That is his thing. Doesn't matter what is going on. Batman yeah. refuses you gotta, you gotta, you gotta remember though. Again, like this isn't this this isn't comic Batman. Like Yo. this isn't bat. This isn't the Yo. Batman that that should, that's gonna be portrayed. He can't have it all. It doesn't matter if he has it all. This is his thing. This I mean, right here. Clearly, it's not. So <laughs> this is like Superman, like this, not this, being able to fly. This, this is rendition. Like, this rendition, no, though, is him is having like, a gun. No, this is like Spider-Man not having web shooters. It's very Or being fair. able to shoot webs at all. This, this is first... like Flash without having speed. Like, this is his thing. This is what makes Batman Batman. He does not kill Again, at it, all. All I'm, all I'm going to say is that it's, one, it's, it's a premonition. So, like, it's a dream. He's, it's not real. It's just him seeing what's to come. I'll say two. It's apocalypse. At that point, like you're gonna have to change. Like some dude came over, took over the world. Your place is in shambles. Now at this point, you gotta do what you gotta do. Even if that means like changing your ways. Like yeah, you gotta you gotta start killing now. Even when even okay, you want to talk about other renditions. Even when even in ju- injustice, when Superman turned evil, evil, he still didn't kill. I like to believe that he wasn't killing these people, just, you know, like, maybe. No, he was catching Larry. bodies. He was. Larry. He was catching bodies. And I, I would I would let it slide if he was just killing the parademons. But no, he is killing people, humans. He is also, killing humans. This is war, though. Like, he, he it's like saying, I'm going to participate in war, I'm going to be the spearhead, and I'm not going to kill anybody. Like, that's, this is the dark side we're talking about. This is different. I think... In this scenario, in this dream, because he's having a premonition, or whatever. Like, if if he was in apocalypse time as Batman, I'm pretty sure you'd kill somebody. Like, you have to do what you got to do at this point. It is the uh, it is apocalypse. Because even in those situations where he's gone against apocalypse, he doesn't kill. He well, incapacitates. I don't believe That's his... Larry. Am I wrong? No, you're right. completely right. Like this is his thing, right? Like, I can't this believe, is what makes Batman Batman. I just can't believe that during wartime, when these men are gunning down his people, like he does, like he just tries to incapacitate 
He everybody. Has, he has other tools. He has smoke bombs. He has like yes, he, that he, is always his thing. It doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter what's going to happen. It doesn't matter what's going on at that very moment. Batman refuses to kill. You no, know, he doesn't have smoke bombs and stuff in in this premonition. He just has his fists. Batman. He's fucking Batman. So okay, he doesn't have and these guys got guns. He has two machine guns. He's out here just murking people with. Hey man, what? if it's apocalypse time, I get it. That's all I'm gonna say. I no. get the change. No, if it's apocalypse and then let's time, continue. I get it. Let's continue because I'm not done. This is what, so we're parademons. That is that is a dark side fucking thing. So this is supposed to be foreshadowing. This is supposed yeah. to be like a premonition. Why is yeah. Superman evil? Yeah, that's what I wanted to know. Why? Why do they why have Superman, Superman shit evil? and they're parademons? Yeah, I... unless it's like a twist. Unless it's like. The only way I'll accept it is like if okay, it's a premonition, but it's a, it's a dream. Like he doesn't know what it, what it's about, so it's just gonna twist it. All dreams are twisted, yeah. so I'm I'm just gonna go with this is just all a twist in his so, in his mind. I know we're talking about Batman vs Superman here, but moving on to like a little bit of like Justice League stuff in like the movie, I'm fairly certain this was to help set some of that stuff up. And they're actually like he, Zack Snyder's talked about how, or at least also with the. Snyder Cut coming out, there's going to be a couple more of these nightmare scenes that will, if anything, hopefully explain what's happening here. Um, I just we're think, not talking about Justice League. We're talking about Batman. I think, yeah, that's what I I'm think, I think the premonition is a god is coming. He's bringing an army. And during the current situation, he thinks the enemy god, quote unquote, right now is Superman. So obviously he's going to see Superman as the threat that's going to destroy the world. When he finds out it's dark side, I think the the dream or whatever twists back to oh this is really what it is. I think it's just a twist of current and future events, yeah. but and it's mashed again, together. That's you're you're using too many what ifs to explain what they give to us, and what they gave to us was Batman gunning people down and Superman chopping people in half with heat vision. No, I, I that's mean, what they gave, and us. it's a premonition, like it's a dream, that, like it was definitely. It's not explained well, like, what the heck's happening. Or, like, even with the fact that like, there's the what-ifs and the premonitions. It's with this, I can understand. I With this, I can understand, because it's a dream. Like, dreams don't make sense. They don't make sense. If it's if it's a premonition dream, whatever, it won't make sense. And if, if he keeps having it, and it becomes more and more clear, then, okay, but it's a dream. I don't I don't think it's going to be all dark side this and that cuz that just gives away too much information. Like dark side isn't even supposed to be a thought right now. So obviously future and present events mashing together, that makes sense. I, I just I, at the end at least Marcus's point and partially mine is I it just wasn't it wasn't displayed right. The, the, or adapt, showed right. the adaption wasn't wasn't good. We didn't like how they presented like Superman and Batman, even in this premonition style. I mean, the Superman part with the premonition, I can get the whole yeah. killing thing. I can see. The I mean, part. I don't. The Batman don't. part is where I'm still a little like, you wouldn't have been like this. Even during an apocalypse time. Like, the world is taken over, and your men are getting gunned down, you wouldn't, like, shoot somebody? Batman's Come whole thing now. is he's gonna figure out ways around it. He's gonna figure out... Bro, he's he's, he's, he's getting he's getting ambushed, and the only way to escape... You're not gonna knock somebody unconscious with your bare hands while everybody's getting gunned down. I don't think there's an escape from that. That's But that's what makes Batman Batman. He always finds a way. That's, that's why he's Batman. I mean... I, like, okay, I if, if his, he's in control, yeah, but clearly no, he's not. No, it's not. There's not if he's in control. There's not like oh prep time. Like no, always. That's his thing. He refuses to kill. He has been faced multiple times with the decision to kill, and he doesn't do it. That's why he's Batman. Like, I probably that's just have I probably just haven't seen enough Batman to to believe that. Because... And I think that's what it is. But like I'm like Larry can back me. Larry, a diehard Batman fan, can yeah. back me up on the fact Batman does not kill. Even in a corner, like yes, he does. He me, refuses. Abs even when the Joker killed one of his sons, 
which any other person would most likely kill, kill the person yeah. who took your son away from you. He refused to kill him. He put him in a body cast for months. Like, but he refused to kill him. That's like, wild. that's his thing. It doesn't that's matter who he's me. going against. It could be Apocalypse. It could be Joker. It could be Injustice Superman. He refuses to kill. That's wild. I don't. That's I character. find that I find that hard to put on a big screen. I don't know how you could put that in a movie, man. Batman, the Dark Knight series, did it. Yeah. What was yeah. What was uh, an ultimatum that he had? Uh, the Joker. Like, was, the Joker was like, "Kill me," and then he was like, "No," so he killed himself. When he was dangling off the building, he was wanting like Batman. He's like, he was wanting him to do it so that even if he knew he was gonna die. But if he, Batman would have already him down, beat the Joker at that point, though, yeah. But if he would have pushed Batman to the point that he would have killed him, the Joker still would have won. I think that's a different scenario when it comes to an entire apocalypse happening around you. Well, this is we're just trying to explain, like, Batman I, mean, I get it, like, yeah, mindset, yeah, I get it. But we can, we can, we can go on because yeah. I'll, I'll never understand Batman, that's why he's not my favorite. <laughs> So, go ahead. Yeah, so we move on after the nightmare. And Batman's combing through the uh, the data he stole from Lex Luthor. And he finds out the white Portuguese is actually a ship carrying the kryptonite. So, Batman's like, yep, I'm going to steal that. I need that. Yep. And he wants he wants to make weapons. Alfred calls him crazy. But he's like deuces. And he, he goes to like, the warehouse docks with the boat. Yeah, my boy Alfred. And I also feel like this movie needed a little bit more action. Really? You think the movie called the Batman versus Superman yeah. needed more action? That's it, crazy it, to me. It, 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 I don't know, dude. I think there was me. an I think there was a decent amount of action in this movie. Not, but the thing is, I'm, I'm gonna save it for later. I'm gonna save it for later because we, yeah, we haven't hit that part yet. We haven't hit that part yet. But on, Larry. So Keep going. And then we get the thing. Batman goes to the the docks. He puts a tracker on the the trailer. And as soon as he puts the tracker on there and they go to leave, he comes out in his bat, his Batmobile. He's got, there's guns, there's explosions, there's hatchback mini guns. And like, he's just dipping and dodging as he's blowing things up. Yeah. If he didn't want to, if he didn't want to kill people, surely that was false because rubber, he's killing rubber, people right now. Rubber, people rubber, are dying right now. Which is another thing wrong with this movie. So that I can understand if you're, you're like now, because in the in the video game, when he's driving around with a, in a tank, he's using rubber bullets and shit. So I'm oh. like, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, but like, this is bullets. <laughs> there, there are people that are definitely blown up, but um, they're just fire damage. They didn't actually die in the fire. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> um, but basically, like he's he's doing it, but Superman comes down. He like flicks the Batmobile to the side, rips he, the doors he just stands off, there, and he's like. Dude, you gotta hang it up. You're done being the Batman. Uh, then, you're not really saving people. Yeah. You're just beating them up. And then you're right killing them. Right before Superman leaves, he's like, "Tell me, do you bleed?" Such a lame line. Yeah. I'm sorry. That was lame. And the super edgy Batman stuff we gotta love, which is also another thing. Like when Zack Snyder was talking about it, that was also another, another thing he never intended. Because everyone was like. Did uh, Batman ever say this in your cut of the film? And he's like, no. This is another WB thing. So W, okay. If you were to tell me that WB is the reason half of this movie, like, is responsible for half of this movie, then I'd say, okay, all of this makes sense. And Zack Snyder is not the dude that I think he is. Yeah. Um. I think WB is also a huge reason to DCU. Has failed. They need to stop. They that, need to stop touching. That, like, that's a shit. whole other, whole other thing. Um, so yeah. And then we move on from there, and then we get like the big Superman trial scene. So Senator oh, June is holding the trial, and she's like, she asks Superman basically to come. She like airs in all public news, and she's like, "Come talk with us." And he, which he eventually does. And then we have the whole like Wallace stuff. So. Mm-hmm. Lex Luthor hired him, and you have Wallace going in to talk Senator June. And then we also see a military, the military group from earlier, the people that were in Africa, looking for the girl that was on TV, originally talking about Superman. So and then we girl, find out that, yeah, we find out that Lex is hiring these people to, like, yeah. hide shit. And to, like, speak bad about Superman. 
Right. So she goes to Senator June, tells her, yo, I've been lying. Um, and then, so we learned Superman. <laughs> a little like, too late. It was very late. <laughs> and then we learned Lex Luthor's behind the scenes. He's the one pulling the strings. And weirdly enough, Superman actually shows up to the hearing. He walks I in. Mean, he opens the door really like he's actually acting like a person. Because he realizes. Like, that's literally what he should have done. Yeah. Way be- earlier, honestly. Because he realizes, like, okay, I need to actually sit here and give my peace. Get, like, actually talk with these people. You can't just save people without telling people what the fuck you are. You're like, come and, on now. And it starts, off, it starts off well, but then Senator June, like, sees something on her desk and she starts getting flustered. Until she realizes that there's a jar of, like, a jar on her desk that says Granny Southern Peach Tea. And then she makes the <laughs> realization that Lex Luthor is not in the audience. And she is like, okay, Something uh-oh. is wrong. Like, and, you're basically taking the bait. Yeah. And she took the bait, and then the Capitol exploded. The dude's wheelchair exploded the Capitol. <laughs> yeah. Which, I didn't catch it in my notes. But as... They come to find out Superman is just sitting there. He's watching everything burn because it happened within an instant. Yeah, it happened. And he's he, since he doesn't like feel this pain or whatever, he's literally yeah. just like, wow, wow, this is going to this is some bullshit. That's Which literally what's going no through his mind. Sense. This is some bullshit. Yeah, it makes no sense. And you know why it makes no sense? Because what? not once, not that he tried to save anyone in that situation well you that... cannot tell no they explain no, why you cannot tell me super superman can't react fast enough to save at least one person they I explain why it. yeah they why? explain why why it was it was encased in lead he couldn't yeah. he, so he didn't know tell... there was a bomb in there just no one know how fast superman moves so, yeah I... by the time that thing explodes though like you're sitting there you don't hear the bomb go off the bomb reacts like in a snap. At that point, he can't he can't do anything about that. No, like that's he's not, not as he's not as fast as the Flash. Like he can't save everybody in there. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now? He's not as fast as the Flash. Not in the comics, but in these movies, yes, he is. They they haven't proven that he's faster than the Flash. Not faster, but he is just as fast. Literally, the next movie they're in. The Flash tries to run behind him, and he looks at him, and, he, and the, the Flash is like, whoa. So you're telling me, in the time that bomb exploded, he had no time to save. I'm not saying everybody. I'm not saying he could have saved everybody, because that's illogical. But he could have saved at least one person. Yeah. He could have saved, like, the senator. And mm, she that, is, that, is, that is reasonable to think that Superman... I'm not talking Batman. I'm not talking Wonder Woman. Superman could have saved one person in that scenario. At least. I don't know. In this movie, I don't think he's as fast as as portrayed that he should be. Like, he's just not that fast. The f- I don't even think that the Flash would have been able to stop that shit from happening in this movie's universe. So, I do think he's fast enough. But like that's because of a like a scene down the line. Uh, in this movie, yeah, in this movie, wait, we should have been able to do it. So I'll, I'll explain when we get there because we're we're right about there. So okay. the flame rages on, the things going on, and basically he just he dips out of there. Doesn't try to help anyone outside the blast zone. Nothing like that. He just he carried out. the bodies out. Did he? Yeah, he put, okay. he he's seen like carrying bodies out, putting them down on the ground, and like he, okay. there's nothing else he can do. He up there, um, but so he left, and then all while this is happening, Batman broke into Lex Corp, stole the kryptonite, Here. took out some guards, broke some windows, set a couple fires. <laughs> he fucked the place channels. up for no reason, which makes no sense. Yeah, it doesn't. Batman would have been. Yeah, in that it. doesn't make sense. If I'll he, say like, that it doesn't make sense. If he's breaking in. He should be breaking in with the, the goal to not be seen. Exactly. So why are you taking out guards, breaking windows, and setting fires? Doesn't he's care. Angry. He needs to he's angry. That's what, I, that's that's, what I'll chalk it up no. to. No. Uh, <laughs> that cannot... You, you cannot does, keep using that excuse. Yeah, it's he's not a angry. Excuse. If he's fucking up because he's angry, he's been fucking up this entire movie Yo. because he's angry. Like... But, then this movie does a horrible job at portraying Batman. 
Uh, he's not supposed to be the golden bat. That's what I'm saying. So anyway, Lex goes to the Vol and Krypton ship, skate, and he's like, uh, "What? What all does the ship have to offer me?" And it's like we have knowledge from blah 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 blah. So he's like, "Oh, cool, all the knowledge he needs." And then also while doing this, he like starts messing with Zod, and he wants to like make something, and they're like, "We're banned for making monstrosities." Here's here's my here's my problem with that. Here's my problem with that. Why? Like, why all of a sudden you want to make a, a a monstrosity now? An abomination? Like, there was no hinting that I want to make something. Or or this or that. Like, who, his, who even said you have control thing, over this thing? His thing was the fact that I think he knew. Also, he lost his kryptonite. So his last ditch effort to make a weapon to kill Superman. My thing is... Was to make another Superman? Technically, yeah. That that's dumb. That's dumb to me. That's very dumb. And my other thing is, this man understands Kryptonian technology. Yeah, because he got the knowledge. Like before that. He oh, was, yeah, the other thing talked to him and explained thing, it. Like gave him all the knowledge. I don't know how, whether like Kryptonian speak English. It did. It spoke English. <laughs> Does that make sense? The Kryptonians speak English. <laughs> Does that make sense? I want in the comics, they speak English. No, 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 no. If you're going to go off the comics, you can't say, oh, no, they can't stop. speak English, though. Stop. Stop. <laughs> okay. Because they they give it to the readers as English because we speak fucking English. The writers speak English. Okay. But you're telling me that a planet, like, galaxies away speaks English. Wait till you find out Stephen Wolf speaks English. <laughs> does yes. that make sense to you? The, neither does anything in any movie. Why does they don't speak English? Okay, like, it's just a movie <laughs> thing. You just gotta roll with that. Translate like, that's an inexcusable thing. Like, Nah, bro, come on, man. Come on, man. The There's man was no like, way he should have been able to understand that. No alien should speak English. Matter of fact, Star-Lord should not even... English shouldn't be his, his first language anymore. I mean, it's his it, first no. language, but he shouldn't speak English anymore. He uses a translator. He uses they a translator. That in the first movie. Yeah. Gamora, Gamora, the raccoon, everybody's speaking English. Groot is speaking English. Okay, they actually explain it in Marvel movies, though. Okay, oh, <laughs> technically Groot's speaking English, but three words, I don't know if that's enough to count as English. I could Either way, alien like, aliens speak language. English. It's just the movie. Like, no, you can't say... No, you no. can't bring that into an argument now. You can't say it, I can't, in this movie they're speaking English. I can't bring English. in the fact this man walked into an alien spaceship, and this alien spaceship was like, yo, we got you. What? He, he used... Because they speak English. He used... <laughs> but I, okay, okay. English aside, he just walked in. He, he used and, this, and the computer was like, yo, we got you. Yeah. What... That was because now he, that part. Go ahead, go he, ahead, Larry. He used Zod's fingertips. That's how he accessed the computer. He sliced okay. them off with kryptonite, and he used that. Okay, okay. I didn't. I, I didn't remember that. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, <laughs> okay. I'm gonna let it slide. I'm gonna let it slide. Yo, <laughs> huge. That's a huge slide, though. Uh, that's a baseball slide. Uh, like, I I let it slide because. Uh, okay, everybody speaks English. I'm gonna just throw that okay, there. I'm gonna let that slide. I'm gonna let that slide. But like, even the though computer... Marvel does actually explain that DC did it, but I'm gonna let that slide. The computer, it's a, it's a, it's an AI, and it like it's like, do you want to assume command of the ship? Saying that in his language, it's like, okay, okay, we'll explain yeah. everything to you now. So he, the entire time that we was not looking at Lex, he was learning the ship. So he learned Pretty. everything in a couple days. He didn't learn. I, I'm not saying he learned everything. You're I'm saying, saying he learned shit? some things. Enough he to learned, make an abomination. He learned... So you're telling me this man learned enough to make an abomination in a couple of days? He learned enough to make a god fight a Batman. We don't... We that, that, Yeah. So uh, I'm a, in a couple I can, of days? Speaking of... <laughs> come on, man. You Clark know goes, that's not stupid. Clark goes to the mountain. He gets some solitude. Talks with his, his, his father's spirit. Uh... And then we also get some, like, we get, like, Batman montage. He's training, hitting the tire because tires are evil. And he's making weapons. And Alfred's like, Bruce, you can't fight him. But Batman's like, 
It's my legacy to stop him. I have to. No, it. it's makes not. No that was the dumbest thing. Wait, did he really say that? <laughs> it's a, did he really say that? To some degree, that's what he said. Yo, that makes no sense at all. I, it does I have a lot of pro look, there's one thing I will agree with Marcus on, and that's this motherfucker cannot just say I'm gonna go fight this dude. Because like, we're we're gonna bring it back to to when Jake said people should see that he is a good guy. The world's greatest detective should see this man as a good guy. That too. Like, Marcus was putting what? logic into this. I was putting street shit like, hey, this <laughs> motherfucker got hands. Why you don't touch him <laughs> Yeah. Like, so, what, the, what is the premise of them fighting? Batman saw him burn down buildings and he killed no. Batman. I, no. Batman thinks he's a menace. Yeah. Batman thinks he's a menace? Again, yeah, he goes J. Jonah Jameson on him. They're hypocrites. Oh, no, they are. He's a they, menace they, when you're out here are. branding people that are getting murdered in prison. But he's a menace? <laughs> and then he's like, you can't be doing this, but then he's going to go do it anyway. Like, what? They're hypocrites. Hashtag there is hypocrite. literally no reason for that Hashtag to fight. Hashtag xenophobia. Uh, that's also a big part of it. Superman's an alien. Uh, costly, they're like... Batman's <laughs> racist. It's an alien, my guy. <laughs> Which is a race. It's not he the human race, so it's a race. He's racist. Yeah. I, in, the, in the actual... An, is, is, there's an animated movie where they fight each other, right? Yeah. Yes. yes. Why? Why is the? Why is it like briefly? Because tell in, me the, why. in that in that animated movie, Superman works for the government. Yeah. And the government wants to bring Batman down. Okay. Like they have a legit reason to fight. Okay. I for the reason that, that Batman wants to played. fight Superman, I can see why it's justified. Only if they're basically saying he is not this great great detective that the comics depict it's a watered down version and this is the batman we're rolling with he's but they just never not say that. Fan, he's not like gonna solve everything he's not like the best he's just like a really good detective and that's that he has but his own no, opinions and what they don't say that so you can't use that argument but that so if, without without them giving you the knowledge that he is not the world's greatest detective. So we have some, to go back to the comics if they don't say ha- that. You have to go on your your basic knowledge of Batman of him being the world's greatest detective. Yeah. Because they have not given you anything to prove otherwise. Because at the end of the day, that is one of Batman's defining characteristics. That's it like is. Spider-Man being able to cling to walls. I think. Because when I think of, oh, he's not the he's not an actual detective like this and that. That's like them saying, in Spider Man One with uh Tobey Maguire, oh, his webs organically come out of his hands, like. But look, they gave you something to show that this isn't the exact same of the comics. They gave you something, and this is what I think is the something that they're giving. No. That they have this to is not give you a line. Is. They have to give like they have to give you something. They haven't given you anything that would prove Batman isn't the world's greatest detective. I think him not finding out that Superman is a good person is a pretty good indicator. That no, he's not that's, the just, greatest that's detective. just poor directing. <laughs> I don't know, man. Larry, am I wrong? Honestly. <sighs> I mean t- you're partially not wrong. Because, like, I'm not saying, like, this is, like, something, like, minor. Like, this isn't, like, a minor quality. Like, this is one of Batman's defining qualities. And I get that. I'm just saying, like, Batman... Batman as a person is basically so well put together, so well rounded, that even superheroes are like, yo, he's a myth. He's not real. Like, it's hard to depict all of that in a movie. Like, you can't... Like, I don't think he could be one without the other. You know what I'm saying? The Dark Knight series did it. Not to this extent. Which I yes. think that's a big problem. Like he didn't he wasn't fighting a, a superhero from space. I feel like they try to cram way too much into this movie, which has also been a huge that I agree. problem. That I'll say. They did they, try to cram they too much into this too movie. much of the wrong things into this movie. But we'll get on to that later. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming up. It's coming up. <laughs> Go ahead. We're Larry. almost there. Continue yeah. we gotta we gotta start getting somewhere because so, we've been okay. going for almost two hours now. Right. So, <laughs> and I can keep going. <laughs> so we're to the final act. We get a scene, Martha gets kidnapped, Lois gets kidnapped by Lexus Thugs. 
Batman shows up in his bat armor. He has his kryptonite spear. He's looking badass. He's looking awesome as he prepares the the battle round for the final fight. And he like shines his bat signal into the sky. And then we cut from there. Lex Which has also made no sense. What do you he, mean? He was calling. He was calling Superman. He's like, you know where I'm at. Why? No, oh, because no. He told, he told him that the next time your your thing shines into the sky, yeah. don't go to it. So now he's like, well, I'm gonna show it. So he knows that I'm gonna be there. Like, okay, that's, okay. That's what I it forgot was. that line. I forgot that line. Continue. Yeah. I'm gonna let it slide. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, where am I at? Oh, yeah. So Lex has his goons bring Lois to him, and he's sitting there talking about how the world's changing. And he's basically just saying, like, gods are gonna fall. And he's like, I need to talk with Superman. So he pushes Lois off the building to get Superman's attention. So this is where I'm saying, I'm agreeing with Marcus, where. Superman has the speed to at least save one or two people from that bomb blast. Man is in the mountains. Man might be in, like, the Himalayas. We don't know where exactly he's at. He's in some distant place. But within an instant, he's able to fly back and save Lois. I don't think he was in the mountains during that time. Not, 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 not like, uh, during when he went to the mountains, but, like, when after he talked to his dad and stuff, I think he came to his senses and, like, said, you know what, I'm gonna go back home. He heard had, Lois had, and went straight to her. Did you see anything that would prove otherwise that he's in the mountains? We can't prove that he's still there. That's the thing. But without any knowledge of him being anywhere else, you have to assume he is still in the mountains because you have not seen him anywhere else. Exactly. I think it's pretty outlandish to think that he's just went, he went, he was in the mountains, changed, flew, picked up Lois, like across the world. Like, you think it's I don't... outlandish that Superman can do that when I literally told you an hour ago that he traveled the entire universe in this in a second to save somebody? Yeah, in the comics, yeah, but the movie's not gonna do that. The movie's not gonna no, say they're Superman not going to do can that, do that. But they can have him come from the mountains to Metropolis to save Lois Lane because he's Superman. Exactly. I don't think they're gonna give him that. It's much not power. like he's Batman, where that's unrealistic. No, this is Superman. He can I I don't think instant. I don't I can't think that now. No, nah, like I I get he's Superman. I get they the movie will depict he can oh do such great God, things, bro. but hit in this movie, him going from the Himalayas, changing his clothes, which I'm pretty sure his super costume or whatever is not with him because he's hanging it up. He went home, changed, went to Lois. I don't I don't think the movie is 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 insinuating that. I can't. I can't think that. I like. It's physically impossible for me to think that. It's not physically impossible. You're just mm-hmm. refusing to think that. Like this is Superman. Yeah. This isn't like it's Wonder Woman or Aquaman or. But that's Batman. like saying like, this movie allows him to be that type of that type of being that the comics are portraying. The man flew from Metropolis to Africa in like a split second to save Lois. That's basically the same distance. I don't know, man. I don't think because don't by think your Zach logic, Snyder, I don't think by Zach your Snyder logic, that... if you if you just because you don't, so what you're saying is just because you didn't see him go home doesn't mean he's not home, right? What do you mean? Like you just said, because Larry brought up the fact that he was in the Himalayas or in a mountain range and flew to Metropolis to save Lois, right? But you're saying. No, you think he was he you don't think he was at the mountain range anymore. You think he was home. Yeah. And that's how he got there so fast. So by that logic, what you're saying is just because you don't see them go there doesn't mean they're not there. Right? Yeah, to some extent, yeah. Okay. So, based on your logic, the logic you just gave us, in when he saved Lois Lane in Africa, just because we did not see him at home does not mean he was not at home. Which, by your logic, we cannot assume that he is somewhere around Lois Lane to save her. And that's so then, what I'm... no, wait, hold on. So then, by your logic, he made it from his house to Africa to save Lois Lane in the split second. What by I'm your saying, logic? Yes, by my logic. What I'm saying is, we don't know what Superman was doing before or where he was at in relevance to it. For all we know, he could have been around Lois knowing she went to a warlord place. Because if you're a superhero who can do almost anything, you would be you would be like, oh, I'm going to listen in on this or I'm going to be around to do this. I'm not saying like with my logic. Yeah, you could also say, well, he wasn't there because you don't know. 
But the way this movie is, the way this movie has been going, the way this movie has just been portraying these heroes, it's not off the comics. It's the DC. It's literally if Zack Snyder said, I'm making a comic book about Batman and this is how he is. And this is how Superman is. He's not going to be able to span the universe in one second. Like, that's what I think this is. I don't think Zack Snyder made him so that he's just that. It's either that or this movie is actual dog shit. It is. And I'm not with I don't I with Zack Snyder being the director that he is, I don't think it is dog shit. So you're saying because he's Zack Snyder, he can't no, fail. No, because I know his history of making movies. So he's he not going to do that. He can't mess up. Of course he can mess up. Here of you course, go. People Here's can his mess, mess up. up. Here's but his mess up. To mess up like this? Yes. No. That's why people are so angry. This movie is dog shit. This movie is garbage. It's trash. It's just Dollar think, Tree headset. It's I just garbage. Think there's too many open holes, and that's why it's trash. That's it, it's, why it, a lot of it is say. left to your imagination. That's what I think. And that's what makes it bad. So it's basically, bad. Superman, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Lex basically <laughs> brings a god to his knees. Wait, um, so wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because I you just get in the this. fight, Larry. Yo, hold on, hold on, because <laughs> I just thought of this. So by Jake's logic, bro, by Jake's logic, if he thinks he's at home, even when Lois Lane gets pushed off of the building, he still could have saved one person yeah. in that courtroom. Dude could have saved at least one person in that courtroom. At least one. I'm not saying the entire room. I'm not saying half the room. I am saying one person, if, a if singular could, being. If he could, I don't have an explanation for you why he did it. And that's why this movie is bad. <laughs> so, uh, it's continue, just, Larry. Who, Cinematic yeah. purpose is all I can say. <laughs> so, uh, Lex Luthor is basically like brings brings a god to his knees, shows him pictures of his mom he has. He has those weird bondage pics because that's what they look like. They're they're, they're sketchy. Um, and he tells him that he has one hour to kill Batman and to save his mother, or she'll be burnt to crisp like a witch. Because he's like comparing Superman to a demon, and like mother of demons or witches. I and- have a problem. He he has a serious problem, and then we also go back. We see we see Martha trapped in a warehouse. The men are showing her. She's like thirty five minutes or so at this point, which fifteen minutes just kind of go nowhere. And then we get Superman finally to go off to meet Batman, and then lightning starts flashing from the fallen Krypton ship. And this is like this is like the final part of the film. Oh, excuse me, the final quarter the final eighth i don't yeah i don't know how to like put it into parameters it's fine but superman shows up and batman's all like ready to go and he's he tries to talk at first but then batman just starts like putting like mini guns up to shoot the man and i think that's dumb bro hitting him whereas superman is just like flicks him away like a fly like the batman would be earlier literally throws this man twice and which should have killed you it should have killed him. He was in That armor. should have killed him. Nah, he had armor. That is, Larry. Yo, it's fucking Superman, if, bro. If I... Larry, if you're wearing... Okay. Let okay. me let me say you're wearing a medieval armor. Also think, and he's trying to talk with the man. So he's not going to fling him hard enough to kill him. Larry, did you... Did we see the same movie? Probably he not. flung that man and broke walls. So Batman, I don't care how many times you work out, bro. You get flung through a wall, you're not getting up as easily as Batman did. So Superman and you get flung through a wall again? Like he got flung twice. And on he, top of that, he should yes, have bones broken. Like, yes, Superman might have gotten hit with some kryptonite or whatever, but when he got his strength back, he flung him again. Like, I don't see how you can that, get up. That hasn't even happened yet. This is just the first two times that he gets flinged before Superman decides, okay, we're actually going to fight here. Like, um, but, I, you got flung! I Why like to make assumptions that, like, we never know. His suit might be made out of, like, Kryptonian stuff. We don't know what he stole from Lex's labs. Larry. Yeah, yeah. Larry, if, stop. If that's, if that's the case, Superman should not have been able to fling him. Yeah. Vax! Because <laughs> uh, he can't even get close to it. Well, I'm not saying Kryptonite, but, like, Kryptonian, like, metal or whatever. I don't know, man. 
Okay, either way. I don't... Yeah, go the, ahead. He has strong armor, and they're not really fighting fighting yet. Well, Batman's fighting. They never fought Batman's fought. I'm going to be honest with you. They never did. Well, Batman fought fought. He did his best. Okay. No, because now it's time. Uh, now it's time. Yeah, so they have their <laughs> big old fight scene. Batman uses some kryptonite gas to weaken them, and so like he punches them through a wall. He like jumps on his chest. He flings them around with um, his back grapple, flings them through yeah. columns, and the the whole fight scene lasts maybe two minutes. Two. It, that's stop yeah, right that was there. not a fight. Two and a half minutes. Yes. Stop right there. Okay. Stop right there. I'll stop right there. <laughs> what is the name of this movie? Batman vs. Superman. <laughs> and they fought one time for two and a half minutes. Yeah. One time. You know what? <laughs> you know what's crazy? When you have a movie like that, where it's like something de- like you define the movie like by the title, like let's say Infinity War. There was a war in that. Yeah, King Kong versus Godzilla coming up. They're going to fight probably more than one time. Yeah. Transformers. You see things transform a lot. more than one time. <laughs> so in a movie called Batman versus Superman, I expect to see them fight more than one time. You remember you remember the point where he like took the wings of the doors off the Batmobile? That's fighting. <laughs> Stop. No, it's no. Not. it's not. That was a debate. Also, yeah. let's talk brief tangent on that scene. Um Batman was trying to stop Russian criminals and Superman stopped him from doing that. So those criminals got away. Yeah. They're both supposed to be superheroes. Yep. Why did he do that? I don't know. I don't know why that Again, happened. that makes no sense. They got but back to this drama. fight scene. Back to this fight scene. It's if they're supposed to be fighting like, actually fight. And it's not like Superman has no reason to fight Batman now. Because now he has a legitimate reason to fight Batman. Maybe not kill him, but fight him. Because his mom is in danger. His mom. Yeah. Yeah. Not not a friend. Not a co-worker. Not an acquaintance. Not a random... His mom. Maybe not his biological mother, but his, his mom. mom. Yeah. Yeah. And he's, he's like, no, let's talk this out. You don't have time to talk this out, bro. You don't. You have time to beat him up so he can't fight you and then be like, I got to go handle something and then go handle it. You don't have time to talk. But he's still in the in the, in the the Batman versus Superman fight. Superman's he's a, not fighting. He's a Boy Scout. He's not going to – he doesn't want to fight. Bullshit. I don't think he ever wants to fight humans. I don't, I don't, I don't give a fuck what he wants. But that's the thing; he's not. From gonna... What the movie gave us, he has every reason to fight. He he has every reason, but all that ends up happening is he lets Batman get the better of him as he's about to get hit by a spear, before he says the most infamous line ever. Martha. Also, yo, stop right there. <laughs> oh, I stopped, yeah. yeah. That was the dumbest right. part. Why are you calling your mom by her first name? Cause, but he, I thought you were going to say something else. Uh, <laughs> I was just going to say no, why. No, I'm about to get to that. I'm about to get to he that. He just said well, first, mom. Let's talk. I mean, would have stabbed him still, probably. So why did he say Martha? He doesn't know. He doesn't know that Batman is Bruce Wayne. So he doesn't know that Batman's mom's name oh, is wait, Martha. No, no, he knows. It's Bruce no, he Wayne. doesn't. No, he, he knows. Bruce... Oh, yeah, he yeah, does. He, he suspected it was Bruce Wayne from the beginning. No, yeah, that's right. He shows up to the fight. He's like, Bruce, we have to stop this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's okay, right. okay. But he still doesn't... doesn't know about his mom, though. He doesn't know his mom. Yeah. I don't think he did that much research. I, I don't think he did that. So why are you calling your mom by her first name? Because if I'm, if I'm about to die, I'm not gonna go, Gina. Maybe he's just talking to like a stranger. You got to save Marth. Well, no, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. My thing is, it doesn't make sense that he would bring up his mother in the first place. No, because we we can we can let that slide because I can't. No, yeah, you you can't. It wouldn't make sense for him to bring up his mom because like he's to supposed save to his mom. Something. Yeah, because yeah. the whole reason he's there is because he's about to mom. die right now. So like in his mind, he could be thinking, "I'm about to die right now. I won't be able to save my mom." 
But he's telling him to save his mom. Yeah, because he thinks he's about to get killed. But why would you ask the person who's about to kill you to save your mother? Last wish. That's the thing that I don't understand. Yeah, you're right. Like, well, why I would you ask? It. Why would why would I ask the person who's about to gut me like a fish, save my mother? I'm like, oh, like what? I would I would have looked at him like I'm about to fucking kill you. I don't give a shit about your mother. You're dead. Why the fuck would you tell me that in the first place? Like, you could have said a bunch of other random shit that could have saved your life. Batman is trying to kill Superman. Again, why is Batman trying to kill? He thinks he's a menace to society. Doesn't matter. <laughs> the Joker's a menace to society. He's not dead. He's not human. <laughs> that's, a good, no, that's a good point. Right like, like, the Joker's a menace Batman to society. To he didn't kill, kill him. <laughs> There's why no Joker tries to, to kill, kill thousands of people. Why did you kill Superman? The, why are you trying? <laughs> the Joker has legit set a bus full of children on fire. Oh my gosh, yo, yeah. you gotta that. That's it's, what I'm talking so about. Like, it's like multiple things in the scene. Why is Superman calling his mom by her by her first name? Why is Batman trying to kill Superman? I get trying to fight him. I get that for whatever stupid idiotic reason this movie gave us. I get Batman fighting Superman. But why is he trying to kill him? Maybe he doesn't know the <laughs> That's a good one. Also, That's a good one, yo. Yo, That's not it. yo, and, yo, here it is. Here it is. This is the point of this entire movie. Right. Why? Yo, why? Uh, yo, yo. You, you, gotta say you it. stopped. You stopped because this man said Martha. Why'd you say Ma- that name? No, bro. No. What? It, it's it um, like, no, no, no. The way he stopped, I I I don't understand that. But like if you if if my parents have been dead for a hot minute, I don't expect you to know my parents. And I'm about to kill you and you say like my mom's name, I'm a I'm a hesitate. I will hesitate for a little bit just out of pure confusion. Stop. Just out of pure confusion. But because I would have been like, like, what do you know about my mama? It's, like, but you're not going to like be like, oh shit, let me stop. Nah. You're still going to kill him. Because you came here to kill him. I would have, like, my thing is, the way that he reacted, he just stopped the whole fight and they were and they were friends. Like, just straight up friends oh, right seconds. after. They were like, and, okay. And you, but like you, if you, I would have had I wouldn't have thrown the spear. No, I would have been like I would have I would have been like what the fuck is he say? why is he saying my mom? like I would sit here and ponder why are you saying my mom's name yeah. like because you just randomly know my mom's name. I'm we've been I've been hating you. I've been fighting you. I know you don't know about me. You might know my identity, but I know you don't know about my past. You don't know yeah, nothing about Superman me. Didn't research Bruce Wayne. No, he just heard the fucking earpiece and was like yeah and, oh. he, and he and he made a smart guess i get it right. but like i i can i i will hesitate if you just pull out some random name that i know while i'm like about to end you i get the hesitation the way he hesitated is what bothers me no oh, and what also bothers me is you actively researched this man like not even just superman clark Kent. like we saw you do it yeah. So like, <laughs> we put in all the reasons. We saw you do it. <laughs> like, you should have known his mom's name was Martha. Like Superman, not knowing Bruce Wayne's mom is Martha, I can get by. Yeah, but him because not knowing that his name that Bruce Martha. Wayne was Batman, but you know Superman is Clark Kent. You know Clark Kent. You researched Clark Kent, and I'm assuming in that research you saw a birth certificate. Maybe not a birth certificate, Adoption but just saw something, something. Yeah. with his mom's name on it. Did they so ever you should know adopt? Her did they name ever, is. Did they what? ever adopt Superman? Like, did they ever legally adopt Superman? Most likely. Probably. Because I, I don't know. I if they if they never uh, like adopted him and he was just like yeah they're just my parents but he doesn't like go through the government or nothing like that. You have I, to. You have to. But they, like, remember, they no live on way, a farm. Doesn't matter. He still has to go to school. They still have to be uh, like, that's right, yeah. his guardian. Yeah, he did go to school and all that shit. Okay, okay, okay. Yep. So, like, they have to, like, have some legal paperwork saying that they are his parents. Yeah. So, in Batman's research, with the Bat computer, he's not using a fucking laptop. No, this is the <laughs> Bat computer. Exactly. <laughs> like, I'm assuming all his information came up as, like, under Clark Kent. So... 
You didn't know his mom's name was Martha? To not know that, yeah. You, you didn't get that? You, like, that was blocked out on every single piece of paperwork? And this so, like, is definitely where this movie goes this downhill. This starts to go way downhill a lot. No, yeah. no, no, no. Stop, way, stop, like, Do not fast. say at this point, this is where this movie starts to go downhill. You cannot say that. It it does at this point goes this downhill point, a lot. This point is when it starts to go downhill. It's faster, everything it goes faster. Everything everything before this moment, I can chalk up to this is just cinematic shit to please the masses because they can't put everything in. And I get they're gonna do a cinematic thing where can you say it's cinematic shit false. to please the masses if it doesn't please the masses? That the yeah, biggest okay. thing that doesn't the biggest thing that bothered everybody was this fight. Yeah, yeah this was the biggest thing, but this wasn't and the only thing. That's the thing, though. If this fight was better, instead of bringing in Apocalypse, and the rest of the time they just fought, and they didn't end it on this whole Martha thing, I think people would give this movie a higher rating, and they would love this movie. You're right. This movie go from a four to a six. It has. It's all. It is a six. Which you, it has a six. I think it would four. go from a six to an eight or a nine. But ev- again, everything. No, Jesse Eisenberg. They would be mad at. <laughs> I know for a fact. I know for a fact. But everything else, you can chalk up to. This is just cinematic shit, so that they can get a point across. I get it. So, oh, but no. this fight well, was is- the biggest reason. Where's Wonder Woman at? During oh they show her in this uh, like I don't know what she was they I think show she was her leaving. later when Doomsday attacks yeah, she, when, oh, okay. I think no, she was it, leaving town yeah, right she was on a plane so yeah she's, yeah, she's, she's trying she's, to leave. What's, hold on, hold on. what's sadder than even the fact that this is not a good reason to stop a fight it's also sad this is not the end of the movie um <laughs> so I really wish they didn't do that <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna oh. we're, we're gonna get to your Wonder Woman stuff in one second. Uh, thankfully, after this, <coughs> when Batman actually goes to save Martha, this is actually the best fight scene in the whole movie, sadly. When he's just, Batman's just going and beating up some goons inside this warehouse. Like, yeah. he, the the fight cinematography here is actually great. As it he's, is, like, sparring, fighting, breaking arms, fighting guns and knives. Like, are you, Wait, are you talking about the henchmen? Yeah. Wait, what? To save Low to save Martha? Yeah. Oh yeah. That was a better fight people? than <laughs> Are you talking about when he's killing people? Yeah, he's killing people. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. He's, I want you to, people. I want you to tell me that when that man's head hit the hit the wall and you saw blood splatter onto the wall, that man is not dead. People can have head injuries without dying. <laughs> okay. I'll, no, yes, I'll, I'll agree with absolutely. you on that. But that whole fight scene, Batman was killing died. people. Batman was killing people. The grenade. Oh, he jumped on the grenade himself. No, he... That man went to go, like, stop the grenade. But Batman knew exactly what the fuck he was doing when he threw that grenade back in that... Yeah, Larry, I'm gonna have to decide with Marcus on this one. Also, Larry, (laughs) this wasn't a head injury. The blood splattered onto the wall. There is a spray. Meaning, the head opened up. Larry, that man is dead. (laughs) <laughs> Larry, I'm gonna have to give it to him, bro. He it's is not dead. like he hit his he head. You saw like nah. a trail of blood, like when he fell. Blood splattered. Man, spills his Kool Aid. It's fine. No, yeah, he's that man you is funny, dead. bro. Dead. That you funny. Batman. Yo, I looked it up. Batman caught 21 bodies in this movie. <laughs> 21 <laughs> bodies, Larry. Like legit, that crate hit that man against the wall. He was dead. He's dead. But like, it yeah, was, was a great people. fight scene. Just with death. <laughs> and then, like, there isn't, like, a lot of references to the Dark Knight Returns, which is why I like to think he's more the edgy Dark Knight Returns Batman. Especially, like, the very last thing is, like, he breaks through the wall, gets the one dude, and then the one guy with the flamethrower is like, I'll kill her. He's like, I know. And then, like, Kill him. He Kill he, him. <laughs> he explodes the flamethrower of the dude's back and as he covers Martha and they had the little quip the I'm a, uh, I'm afraid of your sons. I No t- you're not. The cane. No you're not. No, they're friends now. What? They made up. They made no, up. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> yo, yo, stop. Please stop. You're no, I refuse to You say that, you saying that they're friends? Apparently now they're like 
They are. Uh, they are. And it, that is the dumbest thing ever. Don't tell me. From man, the moment what, they then, fought to tell. Yo, and then Mark dumb. was like, I know. I, like, I, I, like, I guess by the cape. No, stop, sweetie. The stop. moment he was like, say my mom, Batman was like, he has a mom. I have a mom. We friends. And that's, that's fucking stupid. And, <laughs> so, and that happens. And then we get the actual final fight scene. So Lex Luthor, like, thing, we think Lex Luthor's lost, uh, but, like, Superman goes down to save him, but he's like, nah, I created a monster, uh, welcome, he welcomes Doomsday, hashtag not my Doomsday, uh, because the Doomsday they introduced at the end of this movie is just a gray CGI blob monster. He has no, like, really defining features, and he looks so generic and boring, which makes the final fight just gray and bland. Yo, also, didn't the computer say they're not making monstrosities? Yeah, but he the over he said, he said I override it. No, no, no. The computer. You're talking about the the Superman the the General Zod's computer, right? Yes. It was. It said that um, the Krypton Council or whatever has the creed that we no longer can make monstrosities. Yeah. And then he asked, well, where is the council now? And he's like, they're gone. And he's like, well, then continue. Cause nothing is stopping you from making this happen now. So do it, which I think is a pretty legit. You think this is, this is an AI. So an no. AI. Yeah. No, stop because there should, it's a, it's a super AI that, li- that will transmit the, past version of Superman's father and will tell him everything that Superman's father would most likely say. Yes, this thing has a mind of its own, and if it says, well, you know, it decreed it, but they're gone, okay. You're you're in charge now, because they gave it com- they gave him command. Okay, we'll do it. Like, yeah. the AI serves. It will always serve. Yes, it will think, but it will serve at the end of the day. And that's what happened. Okay, so with that being said, what the fuck was the point of adding? What was the point of Lex adding the blood? I don't know. That's what I. That's why I don't want this to be, uh, Doomsday. I don't want it to be Doomsday because you. Is the it, fact, it doesn't make sense. Is the fact of him putting his blood in it what made the monstrosity? Maybe I yes. Like the mixture mixing, of DNA, mixing human, human like what? I don't yeah, know. Human DNA. A little bit of know. human blood makes a monstrosity big enough to take on Superman. He takes its human DNA mixed with Zod's DNA to make some type of abomination to fight Superman. Me or maybe. I don't know where he got the information from. Maybe the computer told him that. But he was basically making something using his DNA, the DNA of a human, and the DNA of a Kryptonian to uh, make a, this. Maybe Which it I was don't. maybe it was a for the thing that he allowed him to like actually control him or something. Which didn't work. It wasn't explained. Because it tried to attack him. Yeah. Yeah, it couldn't he couldn't control it. So if if he was going in thinking like, oh I can control this, like he okay, you were clearly wrong, then I uh, okay, I I mean evil genius thinks he can control something, figures out he can't control it. I've seen it before. So okay, but like I don't agree that Doomsday should have even been in this movie. No, oh, no. This whole like last little fight, it shouldn't have been in the movie. It was yeah, just. I mean, it was it was a better fight than the title of the movie. To have most and I, no, sorry, I sorry, sorry. Every fight was better than the fight of this movie. I feel like this was the worst fight, just for the fact that it was kind of boring. What do you mean the, the it Doomsday was, fight? And I think it was just gray. It was just gray and blank. It, yeah, it was horribly like filmed. Like you, you shouldn't have had a monster like that dark. At night, yeah, it's like the Jake. You remember when we saw Venom? Yeah, and they had <laughs> the dark blue Venom. Fighting I'm, the I mean, black Venom. I'm gonna be honest night. with you, bro. I was high, and I need to rewatch the movie. So no, like, whoa, 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 whoa. we don't smoke. He was eating. We, they don't know where we're from. You they don't know where we're sandwich. from. You was eating a sandwich. I was eating the sandwich. <laughs> Dude, it was a body. That sandwich was so good. I don't remember. We exactly we had how had, the we had all had sandwiches that day. But I was like, high off that, of that sandwich, bro. High off life. That's like that doesn't make it didn't make any sense. Like, why would you have a black 
entity fighting a dark blue, almost black entity to, at to, night. To be fair, Venom. Every time Venom fights, it's at night. <laughs> like it's it's. Well, a, it was it's like a... lights around. Like there were like no lights. Oh, okay. They okay. were fighting on a rocket. Okay, or, like, some, some aircraft. You know, we'll we'll do Venom eventually because we have to. Yeah, we have but, to. Yo, I don't want to watch that movie. Second one coming soon. <laughs> I don't uh, watch that movie again. It was horrible. But so, like I said, it was just uh, it was just they were fighting like a crater basically. Because after the Superman and Dooms, they fought for a little bit, they eventually went up to space, where the U.S. government was like, you know what, just nuke them. And they nuked them both, which all it did which, was... Which, why did they think that was there ever an answer? Like... Because we're the United States, and we're like, we have nukes. Uh, but why would they think that would work? They already determined the only thing that can penetrate the skin of his race is kryptonite. So why would you think a regular nuke would work? I, yeah. Now, I'll say it kind of worked because your boy Superman was looking kind of rough. He got knocked out. Bro, his, my man's my man was looking ghostly. Yeah, like the nuke worked in the sense that it drained Superman of his powers. It, yeah, I'll say it. it I mean, it's not going to kill him. Space. But I know it's not going to kill. He said what? He's in space. Yeah, and the sun brought his the sun brought him back. Like space has nothing to do with this. Yeah, no, no, no. That's my thing. They nuked him in space. Yeah, the sun is right there. Okay, I'm saying like they are nuking it to kill. Uh, what's his name? Doomsday. That's what they're doing. And okay, yeah, they don't know about the sun. They don't know about him in the sun. They really don't. They don't know about him. Like, they don't. So, was, if they're like, oh, let's nuke him, like, that, it yeah. makes sense that that's what they would do. That was this movie's thing of showing that Superman gains power from the sun. Yeah. And, but my thing, my problem, my problem with them throwing a nuke at Doomsday is Doomsday absorbs energy. The fact that they knew, and they knew that before they threw the nuke, they knew that. Why would you do that? Wait, did they know though? Yes, because yes. when it, when he when he unleashed his his little energy wave. Oh yeah, I think were, it was a second they were, like, time. Him with bullets. Yeah, they the second time he unleashed first. his wave, it was like he's getting stronger. He's just he's he's like he can consume energy. This is a thing that can consume energy. So if why any, would you throw a nuke? If anything, their mindset was he can consume energy, but a nuke is so much energy it will like overplode him. Like, that was dumb. The, let, let me tell you. <laughs> oh wait, hold on, hold on. Because at this point, Wonder Woman is already like this. At this point, Wonder Woman's here. No, so, no, she's not. The fuck is she is? No, no, she's she not. She showed up. So she showed she's up. Not here when yet. they nuked him. Yes, she did. Because they're still in space. He gets the nuke power up, falls to Earth. Batman fights for a bit with him, like dipping and dodging with the Batwing. Okay, yeah, and then Wonder Woman shows up. Yeah. She stops Batman from getting obliterated. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Okay, so my thing is... Where the fuck was she before? She was trying what to leave town, bro. Yeah. Yeah, she was trying to leave. And that's the fucking problem. No one's reporting the fact that Batman and Superman are fighting? No, the, she, saw, not... she saw it on an... Or... No, she saw that they were fighting Doomsday. Yeah. I'm talking... No one was reporting that they were fighting each other. They were in an abandoned the, place, so yeah, nobody knew they were fighting except for they Lex. Were, they, what? What are you talking about? What are you t- mm-hmm. like? They they were like at one point they were in like the open fighting. Yeah, they were on what was it? Like they were in an abandoned place. Like nobody's seeing that. Yeah. Like if you see the surroundings, they are far away from like people. Yeah. Like Batman orchestrated this to be like away from people, like Everything away. Was, like boarded up and like deserted. Yeah. I don't think people are gonna see that he's fighting there. And wait, how did Lois get there? That's what I want to know. How did Lois like get there? That that's she. So that's the signal. I that might be where that came into play. That may have been near that area. Well, I know that she so, knows where the area is. I just want to know how she got there. Like, Lex's plane, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, okay. I don't okay. know. Okay. <laughs> nah. No, I legit think but, the helicopter. Again, like, the bat signal is up. Like, if Gotham doesn't like Batman at this point. Yeah, he's in Metropolis. Yeah, he's in Metropolis. No, Superman went across to fight Batman and Gotham. 
So in Gotham. Oh, it's that close. Shit. Yeah. Yeah, it's across the river. Oh, That's shit. what they do in this movie. So, like, if the cops, at, like, if, if Gotham as a city doesn't like Batman, why is the Bat Signal slow thing? That's actually explained in Justice League. But we're not talking about Justice League right yeah, now. Yeah, I know, but I'm just... With like, what we are given, Gotham doesn't like Batman. Yeah. I thought so they said that the cops even joined um, him. Like, Clark's, Clark told his boss that even the cops, like, go out their way to help him, you know? I think I think the cops, if they see the Bat Signal, they're like, well, hey, hey I ain't gonna go fight that Bat. They, like... I think it's not them joining him as much as just, like, turning a blind eye. Yeah, no, no. Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Him. Like, that's what Clark is, Clark was saying at the beginning. Yeah. But, um, okay, so, like, again, like, Gotham is supposed to be, like, Gotham is a city. Like, a city city. I'll say, like, why weren't there helicopters? Why aren't is, there is helicopters? What you're trying to... yeah. Why aren't there people on the streets? Like, it's not like Gotham is, like, a town. No, it's a city. And in yeah. every single city, there are always people out. Yeah. If you, if you had Especially said, when your city is based off of Manhattan. If you had said, Manhattan. like, yo, some crazy shit is, like, falling over, or loud noises coming from over there, I would have expected, yeah. like, maybe one helicopter to, like, you know, be like, yo, this is channel like, some news. Like, that's Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. Like, no one hears this. No one's like, yo, what's going on? Well, to be Where fair, is, the like, fight was, the like, Two and a half minutes, so I don't think a helicopter would have gotten that, to the top anyway. <laughs> and at the same time, that's also when you have the uh, the lightning blasting from the fallen Krypton ship. That was in is it was that in that's, Gotham or that's Metropolis? Metropolis. Oh, well, either way, either way, like still, I feel like everybody's right checking that out. Where are the helicopters? Where are the news reporters? Like, why isn't anybody wondering what's going on? They were for for the electric and for the lightning and stuff like yeah. that happening. I feel like, like they were focused on that. That's yeah. I feel like they were focused on that, and that's why there wasn't like attention drawn to that. Okay. Fighting okay. I'll let that slide. I'll let that slide. But the way I think Wonder Woman could have definitely killed Doomsday by herself. The fact that she because fought, like, in her own movie, she fought Ares. Bro, she cut the man's hand off. Yeah. While he was regenerating his hand, she could have sliced a leg, sliced more, backed off. Like, clearly Wonder Woman <laughs> could have done this by herself. Yeah. And all that really came out of this was, like, they fought for a bit. Uh, Lois Lane tried to hide the spear, almost killed herself by drowning. To get the spear back that she threw into the water. Lois Lane fucked up. Like she was, she was just messed up. <laughs> that's the definition of that scene. Like, Lois Lane, you fucked up. <laughs> and like quite literally, the only payoff of this fight was the very end when Superman was like, "I know what I have to do." Uses the spear, and he goes and he stabs Doomsday in the heart. Which I still feel like he could have gone around him or something. But like you gotta, you gotta look at it this way, bro. It's like I get you have more distance power. to cover. Yeah, yeah. He's losing his power. He's he's it's hard for him to fly. So he's got like you, you straight shot while your power is draining. Cool. But you gotta fly around and then come in. Like that's too much or time. Could have dropped it the Wonder Woman and she could have like javelin. That's what the I'm saying, bro. Like at that time, like what is she doing? She's uh just holding him with a rope. Right. It's not like she's the only one who can use that rope. So so it basically boils down to it's either Wonder Woman or Superman who could do this. And yes, the lasso of truth is I'm pretty sure it only works the way it does with her. No. Right? No. So anybody can use the lasso of truth like that? As, yes. as long as they're powerful enough, I think, but yeah. Okay, so now we have to get Superman over to her to hold the lasso. But, like, she's got it on her person. Like, that's just too much. No, she's holding it. Like, it's wrapped around Doomsday, and she's just holding it. Yeah, you know, she's holding it, him still. Yeah, so, but it's logical for them to switch places real quick. Bro, I don't... The time, for the time that Doomsday is, like, trying to struggle out of that lasso, I don't see him walking... Like, with this, with this spear, he has to run to her, or float, whatever he's doing. And then hand it off. Like, I don't see the time frame. I don't think Doomsday is going to, like, let that slide. So, like, I can see why this is a now or never moment. 
it might not have been the greatest portrayed now or never moment, but I can see why it is that. And basically it just leads to he's in there holding the spear in, which I don't know if he even had to hold it in. Like, I felt like the fact that it pierced his heart. He's trying to pierce. He's trying to pierce his heart, but he probably had it in his chest. It wasn't doing enough. And then, but then like he had to shove it in, you know? Yeah. And the fact yeah, that but like, this he's is, staying in at there. the end of the day, this is still Zod's body, right? Yeah. Yep. So like, it's not like, like if this, if like if it's Zod's body, then the Kryptonite is still having the same effect it would on Superman. But he's also part Meaning, human, so maybe it has less effect or something. Okay, even let's say it's let's say it's a diluted like effect. It's yeah. still an effect nonetheless. It's still weakening him, and it's yeah. in him. It's not like they cut him. No, like it's it's in him. Right. So, he could have, like, backed away, and then Doomsday can't rip it out, because... Well, didn't Doomsday, like, hold him? Like, didn't he grab him? No. No. I'm pretty sure he grabbed him. He No, pretty what much is... all that happened was he was sitting there holding it, which gave Doomsday time to stab him in the chest. And then, and then that's why, like, that, you're probably thinking that's why he was holding him, but, like, that's after he stabbed him. But I'm saying, like, before he got stabbed, he could have just, like... Like shoved it in and then let go, and then like Wonder Woman could have like pushed it in even further, like something else could have happened. Like, mm-hmm. like him dying this way didn't make sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I see. Where you, I see where you're coming from. Yeah. Yeah, I see where you're coming from. Pretty much, he just sacrificed himself and didn't like think it through. Hmm. Which. Yeah. I can see that. I can see that. Which I mean, honor, I I do agree that he could have, they could have killed Doomsday a lot better. Like just, they they could have gone about a a whole different way. To be fair, yeah, though, that's despite, it's just a mess, honestly. Despite how many flaws this movie has, the moment Superman like dies, everyone was speechless. At least I was speechless. I was like, uh, <gasps> well. I didn't really care for Superman like that, my friend. If he, when he I don't died, know why I was you saw, like, I don't know why you were speechless. By from what the movie gave you, you like you're in, like you're supposed to think that this creature is Doomsday, and you as as a comic book reader, yeah, you know, know Doomsday kills Superman. I mean, I knew it too, and I don't read comics like that. So, and and moreover, I, I don't really care about uh, I don't really care about about uh Superman like that. So when he died, I was like, oh dang. And that was it. I was like, all right, what's the next movie? He's probably going to come back. No, as a comic, I, I do know he comes back. So <laughs> it, it was like, it, it wasn't even that big of a deal. And that was basically just, that was that. They fought, Superman died. And the very last, I guess, major scene is where they're sitting there looking over his body. And then it cuts to the military. They go in. And this is where we get the Stephen Wolf steam. Bro, that is I yeah. So in the in the the ship goop, the ship goo, they see like Stefan Wolf sitting there holding the three mother boxes. And just shouting. Yeah, and this I was... thought that was. Oh, go ahead. I, I'm sorry. I thought I just thought that was dumb. Like he's Jesse Eisenberg is just sitting in a pool of like synthesized blood or some shit, and like uh, he's like communicating with this Steppenwolf thing that's like shouting with these mother boxes and I'm just like that doesn't you could have portrayed it a little better it you could have no done sense. so be- much better with that it, there was no explanation there yeah I you just see this dude shouting and then boom and I'm, uh, yeah if you're a comic book person you know matter of fact you don't even have to be a comic book person you're like oh something's coming and Batman, when he's ta- or Bruce, whenever he's talking to Deanna, says, I just have a feeling we should get together and form a team and whatever and this and that. Like, I... Yo! It's just, it's, just, it's just dumb. Bro, she did that through an email. What are you talking about? The whole, like, trying to find the, like, like members of the Justice League shit. Like, uh. um... Okay, yeah. Are you talking about those video clips? Yeah. Well, she didn't. That's oh, how, that's where she's talking about the other movie. No, no, she doesn't in this one. 
but they Bruce originally says it to her when they're at the funeral. So they Well she are so she after, you're saying she already did it? Okay, so uh, let me let me explain all this. So after after he dies, they have the funeral. They have Superman's yeah. funeral, and then they have the actual Clark Kent Clark Kent funeral. Yeah, yeah, where the and, body it really is. Yeah, yeah. So at this funeral, near the very end, they're talk. Bruce talks to uh, Diana, and is like, I basically I'm, I'm, find I'm, the other superheroes. Like, I'm trying to form a team. Like I need to yeah. find people for what's coming, and uh-huh. then when he like returns home at some point, he sees the email she sent him. That that's uh-huh. all stuff that she got from Lex Luthor. That was all on that like data stuff. No, okay. no. Um, okay, so so but two things though. Uh huh. I find it very fucking hard to believe that Batman has an email address. <laughs> uh, I Yo, don't. Also, I also find it very fucking hard to believe that Wonder Woman would know the email address. I think she just sent it to Bruce's email yeah. address. That's what I would think. And Deanna what? also has a job. Like, she does have a job, so probably sent yeah. it to her email address. We all know the government reads emails. We also know the government <laughs> also probably already knows about these people. Like, what the fuck? Like, I mean, Amanda actually... Waller, come on now. She yeah. knows it all. So, uh, yeah, they know, but Again, it's just an email, so I could I could say, yeah, you sent it to Bruce Wayne. She said he sent it to Deanna, whatever her last name is. But the clever way to like, I thought she just gave him a flash drive of the stuff. That's what I thought it was. No, she sent a fucking email. Well, shit. But the clever way to like introduce these characters, you use email. Come on, Snyder. I thought she introduced. I thought they introduced them whenever she like got the she oh yeah you're right the email and then she opened up the videos i mean yeah yeah i don't know the videos made sense but through email that was his big uh, email my man you're you're introducing cyborg and aquaman and you use an email and the flash and then i will say those clips were pretty dope though those clips were pretty dope well, I'm like, I'm, I'm, but I'm not talking about the clips. I'm talking about yo, you how it, yeah, email, son, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no top secret shit, nah, bro. You just you forwarded that shit. What? That was that was like yeah. yo, and and pretty much. And to, this to, is DC's big director, bro. This is this is who y'all. What? Come on, man. Let, let's be let's be honest. It's WB's movie. It's WB's movie. Because <laughs> WB saying, did bro, a lot let, of shit. Yo, let Disney get a hold of. WB, bro. I guarantee. I don't think that's gonna happen. I don't think that's gonna happen. No, that's not gonna happen because WB's got too much. WB's got too much. Yo, Disney could buy WB if they want to. They, they Disney could buy anything playing. if they wanted to, yeah, but playing. they're not gonna stop do playing. it. Stop playing. <laughs> Disney could you know, buy I, anything. You know, the, you know, the, you know how Disney out here. Disney out here, out here. Look, unless unless the company is struggling, then Disney will make a move. But right now, WB's not really struggling. They just don't care what the fuck's happening. <laughs> That's also very fair, but it's like we're gonna do this. It was the sad thing is it still made them butt loads of money. Yeah, it did because people are still gonna watch it. And then to top it off, the end of this movie, we get a scene uh, with Batman visiting Lex in prison, where he basically threatens him, and Lex is like, "I already rang the bell," which means he already called Steppenwolf. Yeah, and the whole dark side situation and we get a final shot of the coffin that clark is buried in with the dirt floating yeah so he's showing he probably isn't fully dead or like actually no he's not dead no no he's Um, not dead when you see that he's not dead also just like just like an x-men when magneto moved the chest piece ever so slightly you couldn't tell he i had to watch it three times to make sure he moved that chest piece yeah and that's when i was like uh no they just straight up float they flung that dirt off the coffin uh one quick note i i do love that the the prison scene where he was just like yeah you're going to arkham you're gonna have fun there I was like, I, hell yeah! I, I was was like, like, yo, I like oh, Jake, bro, to go back, why? If okay, so, like, if you said that, uh, Batman doesn't know that Wait. 
Yeah. You said Batman doesn't know that the criminals who are being branded with the bat symbol are getting killed. Yeah. And like there's like there's a possibility he doesn't know, right? Yeah. So why doesn't he brand Lex? Oh, he le- yeah, he legit says like uh basically I know what this does. <laughs> Oh, uh, oh! He know, he says like he he realizes he knows what the brand does. By not branding him, he he like he was not gonna. That get implies way out. he knows what happens to people who are branded. Yeah, he That's was what I'm saying like he's like but why so, would why wouldn't he brand him then? He if that was the case, to get tortured and not have an easy way out. Not have an easy way because he knows if he brands Lex, Lex is gonna die in prison. That's is that not what he wants? No, he wants him to like no. suffer. He wants him to suffer, but he wants him to live. Yes. He he views Lex dying as like oh you take like taking the ease like like that's, that's like, too good for you. You're right. Death is too good for you. So he But he gonna, kills so many uh, twenty one people what, he just that's without what hesitation. We were saying earlier. That's what we were saying earlier. Batman has to know what is going on with the people he brands. And him not branding Lex shows that. Also it never explains why people who are branded with the bat symbol are getting killed. It never explains that. It just says people with the Batman brand on their skin die in prison. I okay, the whole Batman symbol, them not explaining it, I can understand that. But with you also saying like he doesn't know or that he does know, so he brands them. I don't see why he doesn't have a like. Okay, death is too good for for Lex. What? Like, you you was out here killing niggas without hesitation. That shouldn't cross your mind. No, oh my God. because he was killing people without hesitation, right? Because yeah. he is branding people and knows that they are dying. Uh huh. In prison because of the brand. Yes. Him not brand branding Lex is basically him saying two things. One, I know what this brand means in prison. Okay. Two. I refuse to give you this brand because I know what will happen to you in prison. But so, my thing is, why is he refusing to do that if that's this another dude... plot hole in the movie, which makes the movie bad? Uh, that's because it's just it's like it's like it negates the shit that he's been doing before, exactly. but it doesn't because exactly. he yes. should have branded him. Yes. Yes. By like him going yes. through all this bullshit, yes, and knowing yes. his identity, yes. Okay, yes. <laughs> and you that's see? the thing. Like, you see again. You... Okay, okay. And that yes. that's why I think from the moment they fight all the way up until now, all the information that happens, the fight, the scenes, everything that happens from the moment they fight up until the end is what literally fucked up the whole shit but not to the point that, of no return. Because. Everything like with the branding and the killing people, like that, like like it that changed all. the story. I think it changed it. Like you could have said, "Well, he doesn't know that people died," and yeah. you could have been like, "Okay." You see, what but now that the end happened, like the entire moment, <laughs> so that part of the movie, that bulk of the movie, yeah. made it bad. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so if that part didn't happen, or if it changed, the movie could have been an eight in my book. But it's not. If they just it's, cut it's the not. Last so it's a six. Hour Trust me. Oh, Everything he, about this movie, up. at some point, he pulled the Senator eight. June on me. He pulled the Senator June. Oh, <laughs> what happens if the movie did this? But it's not. Okay, I get it. That's, you you see, got me. That's guilty. why this movie is so bad because every plot point they give you, every every information they give you, is yeah. somehow overshadowed or negated by another plot point they give you in the movie. Yeah. That's why this movie is so bad, because it not only has plot holes, but creates plot holes from things that they said in the movie. <laughs> it so, makes plot holes for the plot hole. <laughs> yes. Yep. That's yep. why this movie is so bad. Like, Larry, I know you like this movie, but you have to admit okay. this movie could have been so much better. So let, let me yeah. like state what it means when I like this movie. This movie had so much potential. This movie could let's have make been... It, let's make this your final thoughts, yeah. because we are yeah. we are past time. This movie could have been amazing. We only been going for almost three hours. Yeah, yeah go this ahead. This movie could have been amazing. And I do like this movie. This movie is the perfect put on in the Sad. background, eat some popcorn. There's a lot about it I enjoy. I like just seeing Batman and Superman on screen fighting. I like seeing a little action scene here and there. 
But if I'm actually sitting down, like, fully listening, fully piecing together the story, it's (laughs) god-awful. This is a movie that that I have fun watching, and that's about it. Is that your final thought on it? Yeah, I give it a... I'll go as far as to say I'll still give it 6 out of 10 Marthas. (laughs) Go ahead, uh, Marcus, if you want me to go. You can go, you can go. So, my thing is, this movie, like Larry said, this movie has great potential. And whether or not the plot holes messed it up or not, it still was a pretty, I'll say it was a decent base to bring in the Justice League and other superheroes. Because when I, when you see, like, the little videos of them doing their little things, it's like, a, oh, this is a great starting point for them. It is. Even though... The last third of the movie was dog shit. It was a good starting point. And everything before the fight was a good lead up. I think it was a good lead up. Yes, they portrayed Batman wrong. You can get by with saying this is my type of Batman. Or this is my type of Superman. You can get by with that. But everything that happens after the fight negates that. And that's why this movie crumbled it it it's like they rushed the last the ending i don't know why i don't know how when it doesn't happen in any other movie in the dc universe I, I, except for justice league because obvious reasons so but that's an excuse why. i can give that an excuse but i'll say this movie has is just a strong setup if you if you had convinced me that why are they doing it like why aren't they doing it like marvel okay dc is doing it their own way and this is the setup we show everybody at once and we do it i'm like okay you 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 kind of set it up right and everything that's dope so i i can give that movie that um again though the plot holes that lead to the plot holes because of the last third of the movie making it dog shit i have to give it like a a five and I say that confidently. A five out of ten. Okay. So two point five stars. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, with this movie, it's me being a comic book fan. Okay, I'll say this. I will. I. I will. I will say if you have absolutely zero fucking knowledge of. DC as a whole. If you have absolutely, like, literally no knowledge, like, you have not seen anything with Batman, anything with Super, like, no knowledge. And this is your first, like, introduction to comic books and, like, superheroes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. This could be a 7. And I say 7, because the last third of the movie fucks up the movie. Even without having knowledge of <laughs> anything about superheroes and DC. The last third of the movie just completely just fucked the rest of the movie. But with knowledge of these characters. And with knowledge of what your actions as a director took. And what you basically did changed and did and like how you tweak the universe and you like I, I you know what let's let it slide that this is this is your iteration this like how the mcu isn't you know them telling comics in um movie format it's its own universe let's say this is for you that's what it is by you killing dick grayson you you change the universe altogether Like, you didn't just... You killed Jimmy Olsen. You killed Dick Grayson. Like, what? Absolutely. Why? (laughs) Like, that doesn't make any sense. Absolutely. You didn't even even introduce Dick Grayson. You just... You said, yeah, he's dead. You were better off leaving him... Leaving the audience thinking that that was Jason Todd. Costume. (laughs) But you didn't do that. No, you, you went on into an interview and you said that was Dick Grayson. Those are your words. And so with all that and with all the knowledge and then adding the fact that she, yo, your ultimate edition was trash, bro. Like that Stefan will see 
<laughs> made absolutely no sense, and you explained nothing. You didn't tell who this was. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. You At one point, it literally cuts over to an alien with three boxes that dissolve, and it goes back to the story. And you're like, what is that? Who is that? Like, why? What? What? <laughs> you, you don't make reference to it. I mean, yeah, you may. I rang the bell. What? Like, no. With, yo, I'm sorry. This movie is awful. What's your it's rating? So, yo, my rating. <laughs> confidently. Being, being generous, my rating is a 4 out of 10. I was gonna say he said a three. I was, <laughs> no, gonna, I was begging on a nah, three, bro. Uh, uh, maybe not. Nah, yeah. uh, no, no. We'll, we'll stick to the four. I'm gonna we'll stick, stick with a four. four. I'm gonna okay. stick with a four. <laughs> it has some good shots, and you know what? I you know why it's a three? Uh, it's a three. Out of, uh, it's a four out of ten. Three, three of those points are because of Alfred. Yeah, uh, yeah. And one of those points is because for every time Alfred spoke, <laughs> it's because I do. I did love like the 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 brief shot of the the big three in DC. Yeah, mm-hmm. like seeing that, I was like, yeah. Like I've always wanted to see that on the big screen, and like this movie gave that to me. So because of Alfred and you gave me that scene, <laughs> I would give it a four out of ten. But. Like in a like... heavy, heavy butt. <laughs> For this being your movie to basically open up the DC cinematic universe. It's the door, yeah. Yo, you did an awful fucking job. An <laughs> awful job. Like, you should have took some notes from Marvel. Would it have taken some time? Absolutely. fucking It took Marvel 10 years to get to their big, like, boom, this is what this has led up to. But look how great they're doing. <laughs> the world loves the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The and world, you yeah. had the opportunity to do that. But you rushed it. <laughs> and you rushed it bad. Hopefully you can save it with Flash. the Flash and the Flashpoint. Hopefully. Hey, but until but then, bad. we're just going to have to keep watching their shit on loop. Who so. said we? <laughs> you stupid. <laughs> I watched this movie for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm never watching it again. This movie is bad. We're not watching this one, but guess what we're watching next week? I, I haven't seen Justice League. I've been scared to watch the Justice League. Okay. It's not so, as bad. At some point, we'll watch Justice League together, but next week we're yep. going to watch, and for the podcast, do Zack Snyder's Justice League. So the Zack Snyder also, also, King's Man comes out next week as well is it really uh march 12th yes king's man comes out i thought that, oh, was that like, um, is that a prequel to kingsman it is the it is the prequel yes oh shit Hell it's yeah. gonna be great no, um i thought they got so, put back no it's it's march 12th 2021 it was supposed to come out in 2020 oh okay so we'll also probably do that so yeah we got a lot on the list guys we got a lot march is great and may is even better i'll yeah, i'll, I'll yeah. tell you all about that later before we go i just want to say justice league the original one was two hours long the snyder cut is four hours and i'm i'm gonna watch every every second every minute so so before we ramble on for another 30 minutes yep hope you guys enjoyed goodbye. this yeah, hope you guys enjoy this wonderful podcast. You can check us out on our main channel where we just talk about random shit, argue, and have a good time. Uh, the For Loop Podcast. You can listen to this On Loop Podcast and that podcast on Anchor, Breaker, Radio Public, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Please be sure to give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and what movie you would like us to watch. So until then, you know, peace, guys. Your boy is out. Bye, everyone. Adios.